Happy Saturday. Buenos días, feliz fin de semana y bienvenidos a Intel Divino. Este es tu host, tu amigo, tu hermano y también tu sirviente porque estoy sirviendo mucho de ustedes, Benny. All right, so uh, we got tremendous news today and once again this show will go viral. I know it's going to go viral, okay? Um, because we're presenting evidence of real intel, <laughs> all right? I'm not trying to brag about it, but hey, there it goes. I'm going to put all the pieces together, and then after I put all the pieces together, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to say, I told you so, and then I'm going to say, bingo. And why am I saying this before everything happened? Well, because look, it doesn't matter how many times we are right, Guru will send their trolls. They're gonna send their trolls because they hate it. They hate it that we giving 80, up to 90% real intel, real news, real divine intel. We are destroying the Guru's lies and we are destroying everybody who's telling you that you are going to exchange tomorrow in 24 hours, et cetera, et cetera. They do an excellent job, guys, to tell you the truth. They do an excellent, guys, an excellent job. They're all doing an excellent job because they're basically showing themselves as the biggest liars and the biggest clowns. They're doing an excellent job. They don't need me to destroy them. They really don't. They don't need me, they don't need anybody. They're doing an excellent a job themselves, okay? But uh, just to let you know, my show is going viral. I got over 20,000 views right now, 20,000. That's nothing. I used to reach 1.7 million when I was on Spreaker. And, um, and now my show is going viral all over the internet. And that's a good thing because, you know, you're watching my show and you realize that it, it needs a, a miracle for something like this to happen. You know, it really needs a miracle. Let me explain this in Spanish very quickly. Don't get mad because this is a bilingual show. Okay. El show mío se está yendo viral por todos los Estados Unidos, por todo el mundo, ¿ok? Ya tengo más de 20 mil vistas en mi canal de Vimeo. Eso no es nada, porque yo alcancé 1.7 millones de personas cuando tenía Spreakers. Ahora la gente está básicamente despertando porque se está dando cuenta que todo lo que se habla en este show está saliendo. Una vez más voy a tener que destruir a todos los gurús tanto en inglés como en español, porque van a terminar viéndose como unos completos idiotas, unos completos payasos y unos completos mentirosos. Porque aquí el único que tiene control es Dios, nadie más. Yo no quiero estar criticándolos tanto, ellos están haciendo un trabajo muy perfecto, porque se están convirtiendo en los grandes mentirosos y farsantes que son. Ellos están haciendo un trabajo muy importante. Ellos no me necesitan a mí destruirlos. La verdad que no. Pero es bueno darles a entender porque ya por mucho tiempo les han engañado. Por más de una, doce, una, una, una década, esta gente se ha aprovechado de muchos de ustedes. Y los ha engañado. All right. So, we're going to have a, a return back. We're going to have a... Somebody who hasn't been here in our show for a long, long time. And I'm so happy to bring him back. Oh, yes, we're going to have him back. I was worried about him. And hopefully he will call me right now. And uh, we're going to listen to the word of God. We're going to pray. Maybe he can hang on because I'm gonna shock him. <laughs> oh my lord, my lord, my lord. I'm gonna shock everybody. Watch. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Okay, 
you know, they're really, I really, I, I get, I get like, they were, I'm going to get these guys. You know, I, I keep saying, look, I'm going to get these guys as soon as the time comes. And I got them. <laughs> oh, my God. I start crying again because uh, the Lord has been speaking to me, right? And uh, he said, <laughs> he said the most beautiful things, you know. Um, and also, I got to tell you something. Um, we're going to talk about the technology that I talked about yesterday, okay? We're going to show you the video. Um, some of you did not understand what I talked about. So I'm going to make sure that everybody understands. We're going to be waiting for his call. And hopefully he called back right now. Uh, but why he's calling, let me tell you something. The technology that I'm going to show you is a technology. It's not something satanic. It's a technology. And um, they've been able to use this technology for almost 2,000. No, actually, the years, the year that they, they, they did use it, they, they, were, they, they provide this technology 2,000 years ago, believe it or not. And after that, uh, around 50 years ago, they actually developed that technology. They develop it. The cabal develop it. And that's how they've been managing the world. They've been managing how the uh, events will happen through the years. But they cannot, I don't care if they can see the past or they can see the future. Because with this machine, they can see the past and they can see the future. Okay? But they cannot alter the future. They can't. Okay, they cannot. They, they, they've been trying to alter. Actually, they did try to alter. And here we go. Hold on. Brother. What's going on, Brother Ben? Welcome back, Pastor McGrary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you, can you hear me good? You're back. Pastor McGrary back in home. He's in the house. All right. Yeah. Can, can you hear me good? Yes, I can hear you good, my brother. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, are we uh, were, were we on Vimeo? Yeah, we are on Vimeo Worldwide. By the way, my, my server registering almost. Uh, oh, wow. It's almost 7,000 people right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, <clears throat> I am happy to be here. Um, I was under the weather uh, probably for about a, well, shoot, it started last, oh goodness, maybe last Saturday, so it looks like about seven days, um, starting to feel a lot, lot better, starting to get my energy back. I want to tell you all, um, it's very important, uh, guys, that uh, Jets, that I'm talking to, Vimeo audience, anyone that Ben has uh, access to, uh, take care of your bodies. Okay, take care of your bodies. It's very, very important for the work that the Lord have you to do. You, we, we must be healthy and vibrant and full of life and energy. I, I kind of been um, negating that. I generally take vitamins and minerals, and I actually take a B12. Um, I take B12 every day, and actually um, somebody had told me about Alex Jones' uh, InfoWars uh, products and they're a actually excellent and so i've been taking this b12 uh, from him for months and 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 i have not had a cold uh, i have not been ill but i stopped taking it the b12 and i stopped taking my vitamins uh, for about a month or so and i tell you what um, about eight days ago i just felt slammed i had been actually and this is another thing i want to y'all get your rest too because I had been actually uh, getting in the bed sometimes one thirty, two o'clock in the morning, back up at 5 to start my day. So I was doing this for about a month or so, and, I mean, it really caught up with me. Um, a couple of days, I just, I mean, I just couldn't move. So you all uh, take care of your bodies. Get your good vitamins in. I know Ben talks a lot about um, herbs and supplements and whatnot. So you all get in on that and, and get your health. It's good to be able to pray. 
And I'm telling you, I was praying, man, but I tell you what, some of them days, I just, after I prayed, I just went and laid down because I was really, really dealing with this. And this leads me to this point as well. Do not let anybody, I don't care who it is, now, this is pastor's instructions, and I give this to my folks. I give this to anybody that I come in contact with. Do not let anybody pray for you or pray for your families that does not pray in the name and blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. That is dangerous. I sent, I sent Ben uh, a couple weeks ago, I sent him a text about this. Um, we do not serve some source, amen. We don't serve uh, these these demonic principalities, these the all this crazy esoteric foolishness. This is not God, folks. You are opening up yourselves to them. When people tell you, "I'm sending you light and love," listen, bind that and say, "Send me the blood of Jesus Christ." Yeah, they say me. Uh, the, the, the Bible talks about yeah. this. The Bible talks about uh, Satan. Satan, Lucifer, comes as an angel of light. I need to know what kind of light you coming in. If you're not coming in the light of Jesus Christ, God don't need light. God sent Jesus Christ the name and blood. If you're not coming, don't listen. I'm pastor's going to be very honest with you today. If you pray for me, and you're not praying in the name and blood of Jesus, I'm going to bind you. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I'm going to bind you. And I'm going to send what you prayed back on you, because you are not praying in the name and blood of Christ. That is the only Holy Ghost prayer that we need, the name and blood of Jesus, all this other junk. All these other light workers, this esoteric New Age stuff, you better get out of it. And you better get out of it quick. Amen. Now, that's a warning. I'm, now, I'm talking to you uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is important. D listen, Kondo Bosai, don't be ignorant. God is a holy, he, he has a holy anger today. Don't be ignorant, Jets. Don't be ignorant. If people can tell you, people will tell you anything. Some of the same people that come with this foolishness is some of the same people that are telling you, oh, your Zim is going to be worth a trillion. There is no such thing as money. It's not. It's not no such thing as money, huh? Well, then you take your $100 bills that you got and throw them away. Okay? If there's no such thing as money, then you take your hundred dollar bill down to the gas station and tell them you don't have you don't have any money because there's no such thing as money. It's just digits. I'm telling you all, some of these same people that are telling you all these outrageous, uh, outrageous numbers, you're not going to be a trillionaire. Condo Bosai. you are not. Get that out your head. Many, 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 many can't handle uh, uh, being a millionaire. Do, do you you do you think you're going to be a trillionaire? Do do you think just just let's just be honest? Do you think the powers of this world, the cabal? Do you think they are going to allow us to be trillionaires, folks? Get 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 that out your mind. Thank God that if you walk out of um, the bank being millionaires, give them praise and give them glory, and put that kingdom money to work. And the reason why I'm dealing with this is because some of the same people that told you all you were going to be trillionaires is some of the same people that's talking this crazy junk about source and uh, germane this. And no, there is no other name under heaven that men may be saved, save the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you again, if you got people praying for you, if you got people sending you love and light, bind it, hallelujah, and plead the blood. That's going to keep you alive, Jets. That's going to keep you alive. That's going to keep you alive. It's going to keep your family alive. Amen. It's going to keep your friends alive. You plead the name and blood. For we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. 
that's important, and I hope you all understand this. I'm not trying to be mean and whatnot, but I th- we are living, we are living in the last day, my la- my brothers and sisters. What God is about to release in the earth, Amen. What God is about to release in the earth is the end time harvest. Now let me warn you: along with the end time harvest, will come great persecution. Along with great persecution, will come the second coming of Jesus Christ. I just read an article five minutes ago, and I'm not really going to get into it and explain it. Maybe I will uh, in a couple weeks if we're able to. But they are saying over in Israel, a red heifer has just been born. Now, if you understand anything about that, they are going to use the pure red heifers to start the sacrifices again in the third temple. This is the same temple (coughs) <coughs> that the Antichrist will come in and declare blasphemy against God. Well, if the red heifer has been born, there has not been a red heifer born for over 2,000 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is wrapping up. Your RV, your GCR, this thing that we have been praying about and laboring about and laboring to get into is going to prepare the way for the coming of Christ. It's going to do two things. It's going to prepare for the coming of Christ, but at the same time, it's going to introduce us and get us ready for this one world system. Hallelujah. This one world government, this one world currency. You mark my words. I'm telling you what I know. Now, what has happened is <clears throat> President Trump has set this back somewhat. So in God's grace, his mercy, he has set him uh, in office, and some of this, some of this one world agenda, he has really set back. I mean, for some years. So we do have some time, but I'm telling you all, this is why it's so important to use your finances for kingdom purposes. I, if I've said it once, I've said it 15 times. There's so many cars you're going to be able to buy. Amen. There's there's so much house that you're going to be able to live in. Amen. It's so, I mean, it's so many purses you can buy, so many suits you can buy. Listen, use this money for the kingdom of God and his Christ. And I'm telling you, he is going to give you things that money cannot buy. Yes, you won't lose your money. Make God God the, the, the king of your finances and you'll be fine. But at the same time, Make sure that you are sowing into the kingdom. You are giving into missions and ministries. You are giving into foundations, Christian-led foundations. Be wise with your money. Ask the Holy Spirit where to sow, where to give. It's his, it's, it's his world. He knows. So you make sure you ask him, where should I give, Holy Spirit? Who should I give to? Amen. Show me what you want. To do. Because I'm going to tell you something. You are the new elite. Oh, yes. Yeah. You are the new elite in the kingdom. What, why, why do you think God picked you out? Have you been that good? I haven't. Are you that great? I'm not. Why do you think God picked you out for such a time as this? Huh? When there are people, my brothers and sisters, that are making $10 an hour, 15 to see where I live in, 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 in the region of the United States I live in. There are people that's making fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. They think that's great money. That's thirty thousand dollars a year, fifty-two weeks a year, forty hours a week. Some of you are gonna be making that in interest every month on your on on your principal. Why you think God picked you out? Been to L.A., the city of Benny, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. I, I had a culture shock. I had a culture shock. I had a culture shock. I walked out of my hotel and walked across the street, and there was a couple, ladies and gentlemen. There was a couple. There was a couple that had just slept on the ground. That had just slept all night on the ground. I walked across the street. There was a couple in there with tents. What's, wh- wh- why are you different from them? You know why you're different? Because God called you to be in this opportunity. He wants you to change lives, change destinies. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. Because one day, when you stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you will give an account 
you will give an account for this blessing that he is releasing to you. You will give an account. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Bless the king and bless his kingdom. Tomorrow, uh, looks like we are going into Rosh Hashanah. Now, that's, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because uh, Rosh Hashanah is the head of the Jewish year. The Jews don't go by the Gregorian calendar that we go by, okay? Our Gregorian calendar is 2018. The Jews' head of the year or their first of the year starts tomorrow at sunset, 9918. Okay, nine nine eighteen. Now that's a big number for us, because nine nine eighteen one plus eight equals nine. Those triple nines actually have to do with birthing, and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But I want you to understand the new Hebrew calendar says we are going to be in the year fifty seven seventy nine. 5779. Now, that 9 on the end of there is significant because, I, like I told you, tomorrow sundown on 9918 begins Rosh Hashanah, the head of the Jewish year, the beginning of the year. Okay? Now, put that to the side. Let me tell you this, too, because I heard it on the news. What people are not realizing is with this president, with our President Trump, Okay, whether you agree with him or not, okay, this isn't this isn't a political call. But whether you agree with him or not, he did something that set the U.S. on a blessed path when he declared that Jerusalem is the head of Israel, is the capital of Israel. It put us on an economic um, train that is picking up steam. So you're hearing a lot of people talking about the prosperity of America. Well, the Bible says, if you bless Israel, I will bless you. If you curse Israel, I'll take you all through the Bible where that's a fact. Well, what President Trump is, what, what he did was, he put himself, his administration, this country, back in alignment with Israel. If you remember during President Obama's reign, there was some fiction, friction, sorry, there was some friction there. There was some friction there. And we were not that known, where we were known as the friends of Israel. In name we were, but in policy we were not. Let me say that again. In name we were, but in the policies coming out of the White House during that time we were not. When Trump came in there and set himself in alignment with Israel, in alignment with Netanyahu, the blessing of the Lord began to be propagated again over this country. Now, Fight me on it, say what you want, but the facts are the facts are the facts are the facts. Any nation throughout history that have sought to come against Israel have been destroyed, and that will forever be. Israel is God's firstborn, okay? So when you bless them, he'll bless you. When you curse them, he'll curse you. He even went as far as to say, if you love Israel, pray for them. And by your prayers for Israel, he said, I'm going to prosper you. Isn't that something? By your prayers, he said, if you pray for the nation of Israel, he said, I'm going to prosper you. Just out of your mouth, speaking well of them, praying for them, praying against terrorists. He said, I'm going to bless you. Well, what, what do you think will happen if you do something else for the nation? He is going to bless you. There is a supernatural blessing that comes in assimilating and aligning ourselves, our ministries, our homes, our businesses, Benny, our broadcast with the nation of Israel. If you really want to go back to it, Benny started blowing up spiritually with his numbers. That broadcast that he declared that Israel will live forever. There was a supernatural jurisdiction that came on Benny's broadcast because he was blessing Israel. Now, we have said that, and we have said that, and we have said that time and time again. That is a spiritual hierarchy, and that is a spiritual principle. Now, talking about tomorrow, at sunset, we are going into Rosh Hashanah. This will be a year, 5779, of birthing. Okay, of birthing. Many of you, and, and, and I, if I dare say, if I dare say this, 
this is the year the RV will be birthed. I really believe that. I believe there is something that's going to happen within the next few days. During this holy time, during the Bible calls that high holy time, the feast of the Lord, the Lord's personal feast. If you look at the... The Hebrews use certain symbols, hallelujah, thank you, certain symbols. And one of the symbols that they use is, is, is called Tet, and that is the symbol for this year, the year 5779 is Tet. And Tet is all, it, 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 I wish I could show you a picture, but it, all, it almost looks like a birthing canal. It looks like a birthing canal. And that it, it, and and it's it, it it it's it's actually supernatural because of all the nines that we are dealing with with the year being fifty seven seventy nine in the Hebrew calendar. That's a birthing year. It's the last year of the seventies, going into the eightieth year, which is next year, uh, going into twenty twenty. But going into two thousand nineteen on the Gregorian calendar, two thousand nineteen. Uh, what we'll celebrate come January, the Jews are already celebrating it starting tomorrow evening. Now, this is very important because this will be the year of birthing, birthing the RV, birthing the GCR, uh, physical birth, re- really meaning manifestation. You know, we've been praying about manifestation, so this is the perfect time for the Lord to manifest that blessing that we have been waiting for. And not only that, there is going to be some spiritual things that's happening for you as well. Amen. You also note there are nine gifts of the Spirit. There are nine fruit of the Spirit. So this will be a time in your life, and hear the word of the Lord, this will be a time in your life where the Holy Spirit will begin working for you. And I am going to pray uh, before I hang up. I'm going to pray that you all be filled with the Holy Spirit this coming season. Amen. He is the wisdom of God. He was, in, the Bible says in Genesis, the Spirit of the Lord brewed upon the face of the water. Then God said. So the Spirit is the worker in the Trinity, the worker in the Godhead. You got Father God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and Yeshua. And then you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power or the worker. God says, in this season, I am going to have power. He says, I am going to have you birthing things through my spirit. You're going to have to push them out, but I'm going to have you birthing things through my spirit, the supernatural things, the things of God. Amen. Your visions, your purpose, your destiny. This will be a time, this will be a season where God is going to birth that supernatural destiny that many of you have been dealing with. Remember I told you before that God was going to do some things in your life that money cannot buy. Your money problems are pretty much solved. If you do it right for the rest of your life, your money issues are solved. You can pay your house off. You can pay your car off. You can do kingdom stuff. Okay, so you're going to have to go on to the next thing. Most people spend their time worrying about money, money. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to pay this car note? How am I going to pay this house note? How am I going to eat? How am I going to send my kids to school? Your money problems are solved. God says, I want you now solving other people's money problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're back to why am I here? Why am I being blessed with this opportunity? You are blessed to be a blessing. You are not blessed until you are a blessing. Let me say it again. You are not blessed until you are a blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are in this RV. You have had faith. God is birthing this out so you can be a blessing to mankind. Do they have to know Jesus for you to be a blessing? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. By you being a blessing, they will get to know Jesus Christ. By you being a blessing, they will get to know Jesus Christ. So you have a magnanimous opportunity to not only bless God, but to bless the people of God, and not only that, but to bless the people of this world, and let them know that there is a God in heaven who sent you to bless them, and you would love to introduce them to the man called Jesus. That's very important. So getting back to this tet, which is, which, which is, which is the symbol of this coming Hebrew year, the birth canal, that means something is going to be birth. Something is going to be birth. Ideas and destiny stuff provision. This is a birthing year, but you have to be careful that you're birthing something that the Spirit of the Lord would have you birth. 
that is key. Let it be from the Spirit. Let it be... (coughs) Pastor McGrady, they just activated my Facebook Live. (laughs) All right, are we still on? Yeah, we're still on, but they just activated my, my, my Facebook Live. You know, they blocked me before. As American, we all, just activated again. Yeah, we're live. We're still live. Go ahead. We we still live. Okay. Yes. So that's that 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 that's that's very important. That's very important. So those nines, those nines are big. They are big. They are big. They are big. They are big. And I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. When you start talking about a double portion, financial overflow, restoration, that's another thing. There are some things that God is going to do this year that's going to restore things you have lost. Restore things. He, the Bible talks about in Psalms 23, restore, he's going to restore your soul. Restore your soul. Some of you have lost your soul through relationships. So when I mean your soul, I'm not talking about that other stuff. I'm talking about your mind. You've lost your mind through some relationships. You've lost your emotions through some relationships. You have lost some things. And God says, I am going to restore all of that back to you. Because the last thing you need is a lost soul and money. The last thing you need to, to be is manipulated with money. If you are manipulated, if you are easily manipulated and you have money, you will not keep it. People will use you, and they will discard you and throw you away. You don't do that. You don't do that. Be wise. Be wise in the Spirit. Be wise in the Holy Ghost. Be wise. The Bible says be, be wise as a serpent, but yet gentle and as innocent as a dove. But you need to be wise with the resource God has given you. And I'm going to pray also that the divine presence of God himself, that you will have increased revelation and his divine presence. That you will have increased revelation and his divine presence. I told you all, uh, and and I'll tell you again, one of the reasons I came on to Brother Ben's broadcast, uh, and I really wanted to stay hidden, to be quite honest. I I really did. I have my own ministry, and my own ministry has nothing to do with Dinar, it has nothing to do with dong. I talk about faith. I talk about the name of Jesus. I talk about the blood of Jesus. I preach messages. I all I do all that, and it has nothing to do with a GCR and an RV. But God wanted somebody to come in here and undergird all this foolishness that we have been hearing. Okay, because God shared His glory with no man. He shares his glory with no man. The Bible says the gold and the silver belong to me. The gold and the silver don't belong to the elders. All right? The gold and silver don't belong to all these other people that you all are constantly hearing about. No, the gold and the silver belong to the Lord. And there were a lot of condoms. I feel the anointing. There was a lot of stuff being sown into the Narland. And some born-again Bible believers were being inundated with it. I'm talking about uh, this, this, this new paracondable, this, this new demon, and, that, and that's exactly what God is calling it. It, it was demonic spirits, this new paradigm, this, this, this mind power. Hallelujah. God is not into mind power. He's into Holy Ghost power. He's into the name of Jesus. He's into the blood of Jesus. He's into the power of the Holy Ghost. So when you start talking about all, all this other foolishness, it was releasing demons into the Narland. Demons over these airwaves, demons on these phones, demons on these broadcasts, and many of you were listening to this junk two and three hours a day, and your minds were being inundated, and you were having problems in your homes, problems in your marriage, and God got tired of it, because one of the things that we stopped doing was seeking Him, and we started seeking the RV, and we started seeking the GCR, but we stopped seeking Him. So when he sent Benny, I watched him a little while, and then I came on because I felt like the Lord was saying certain things for this hour. Did I know? And I'll be honest with you. I'll just tell you straight up. I'm a straight shooter. My own family. There are certain things that I can say, and my children heed it. My wife heeds it, and they listen. And it has been like that because I'm a man in authority, I'm under authority, and I have authority. 
But when Kandabo side, when it came to this RV, I was listening to certain calls just like some of you. Now, I knew better than to get on some of these esoteric calls where they calling unto this space, all this space junk and these green men and all that stupid stuff. I knew better than that. But there were certain calls that they didn't even pray on that I would get on, and they would say, it's going to happen this weekend. And I'd tell my wife, babe, it's going to happen this weekend. And my kids would hear my conversation. I told Benny that Benny sat at dinner with my family, and, and he felt some of what I was saying. He was there. Amen. We was breaking open chicken wings and, and chili and eating greens and drinking oh, sweet tea. He was there. So he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, Benny was even there when I sent back some greens. I said, these, this, there's not enough greens for five ninety nine. Take these off of here. So uh, he was there. But he understands my family, and, 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 and it, it's, it's, it's been difficult. Yeah, for the pastor, it's been difficult, but because when I was saying things to them for three years, it, no, maybe, yeah, two or three years, I was telling them, such and such said, uh, it's going to happen this weekend, and because they want us to be ready for Thanksgiving. Uh, they want us to hydrate the economy. Oh, I know y'all remember that. They want us to hydrate the economy. So uh, we got to get this money in November. Because they want us to have a great Christmas. They want us to buy out all the stores so the U.S. economy can grow. Not knowing, three years later, <clears throat> we would still be believing for this to happen. I didn't even know that we had an administration, evidently, that didn't even want us to have this thing. So I'm told. So what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is God has had a purpose for this all along. And we are in the season for this thing to spring forth and to come about. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that with all of my heart and my soul. And so, very quickly, I'm going to just have a little prayer. <coughs> Try to save my voice. Uh, save my voice uh, for, for a little bit tomorrow of what I have to do. But I'm, I'm going to have prayer. Uh, with you all, because we are entering into the year of 5779. 5779. We are entering the year of 5779 in the Hebrew year. We are going to declare birth. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for this Hebrew year of birthing. And I pray for every jet, every person under the sound of my voice. If there is something, Lord God, that you have given them, Father, I pray this, this, this is the season that you birth it out of them, whether ministries or marital things or uh, single things or things, Lord God, that they have even put away and have not dreamt about them. Lord, Stir that vision up and let ministry arise in their belly. Lord, let them push out in the name of Jesus everything that you have given them in this time. Let your power, Lord, let the power of the Holy Ghost arrest them. And I pray that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that you would give them gifts and give them the fruit of the Spirit, O oh Lord. Give them the Spirit. Give them the Spirit. Give them the Spirit of the Lord God. Give them the fruit of the Spirit. Give them the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Those, Lord, that want a prayer language, I pray that you give them a prayer language so, Lord, they can pray over their families and they can pray over their friends and they can pray over the things in their life in Jesus' name. Lord, and I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that we are in your presence, Lord, and I thank you that you make our lives a Bethel, a Bethel, a Bethel, Lord, a Bethel in the name of Jesus, Lord, a healing place, Lord, a place of birth in Jesus' mighty name, Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, we ask that you arise in our lives, arise in our lives and help us birth out the things that you have called us to birth. Help us to push, Lord God, even when we get weary, help us to push out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for restoration. 
restoration in our marriages and restoration in our health and restoration, Lord, in the things that we have lost. Lord, restore, 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 restore in the name of Jesus over every jet. Restore what they have lost, Lord. Thank you for solving our financial problems and woes, but Lord, we ask you to restore our soul, for you are our shepherd and we don't lack. Lord, make us to lie down in green pastures. Lead us beside the still water and restore our soul. And Lord, do this for your name's sake. Do this for Jesus' name and Jesus' sake. Do it for Jesus' name and Jesus' sake. Not not our good works, but do it for your grace. Do it by your grace in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we, Lord, gather this text, this, 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 spirit of what we are in now, this tet, Lord, this birthing, this canal, we are birthing now in the spirit, and we command divine manifestation, divine manifestation, just like a woman who had been impregnated nine months ago is coming up on her period of soup of manifestation of the baby coming lord we command that our baby come in the name of jesus the baby of the rv the baby of the gcr the baby of our financial deliverance hallelujah the baby the baby is being birthed and pushed out in jesus and we claim it by the blood by the blood by the blood of yeshua <clears throat> Hamashiach. We claim it in the name of Jesus, and we believe you to do it. And we bind the Kobara Tankando We bind every devil. We bind every demon. We boko shai. We bind every light worker. Hallelujah, for nobody can stand in the presence of the blood of Yeshua. We bind all demonic forces and principalities, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. We render them harmless and ineffective against us, against any jet in the name of Jesus, any jet that's called by the name of the Lord. We bind every devil over their life. And we command their lives to line up with the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak it forth. Now we loose every angel of the Lord. The warring angels. Kodamasa. The archangels. The angels of Jehovah. Koreanobokushnaba. The angels in the atmosphere. The angels from the third heaven. The angels of Jesus Christ, the angels of the Holy Ghost, we release them now on behalf of every jet, on behalf of everybody under the sound of my voice, we release the angels of the Lord. For blessed are you, his angels, that excel in strength, that do his word, heeding the voice of his word. And as we have given his voice to the word, and we have given the word to his voice. The angels are going now, bringing forth our harvest, bringing forth our promotion. For we walk in the favor of God and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. We command favor and divine birth and manifestation to come forth now, 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 in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and I say to every Jew, Happy New Year tomorrow. Happy New Year. Blow your shofar. Blow your shofar, for the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. And we bless the nation of Israel out of our mouth. We bless the nation of Israel out of our mouth. In the name and blood of Yahshua Hamashiach, Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you. For your name is high above every name. Your name is high above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee bow and every tongue confess of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. Bow their knee to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
confessing that he is Lord of all, to the glory of God the Father. The anointing is present. The anointing is present. The anointing is present. Birth out what God will do. God bless you. God keep you. He's always my divine prayer. In Jesus' name. Yes, my brother. All right. Yo, I just played just play the show far. And um, we got to remember that, um, you know, we, we need to back. We need to support. We need to, we need to love the apple there of the Lord's eyes. And that's Israel. And um, trust me, I was very anti-Semitic before. <laughs> trust me. Um, um, when I accept my Lord as my Savior, I um, I really had to kill myself. I die inside of me. I I kill my ego. I kill my thoughts. I kill my everything. And that's true. We need to we need to follow him. He knows better. Follow the Lord. Thank you so oh, much, yeah. brother. Yes, sir. So are you gonna stick around or um Yeah, so let, let me do this. I'm I'm having a hard time hearing you, so let me uh okay. let me, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make some tea and then I'm gonna call you back okay. in like ten I'll, minutes. Well let me just call uh, Pastor McCoy because uh, she's gonna share her uh Oak Tree uh, prophecy. Cool. Okay, then I, I'll be listening in, and then just let me know when you want me to call back. Definitely, I'll, I'll do. I'll do that. I want you to see what I just find out. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, all right. Bye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. All righty. That was um, that was basically uh, Pastor McGre McGrary. After a very long, long time, uh, he's been sick, and we're gonna pray for him. Um, so he can get better. So I ask everybody to please pray for Pastor Mag uh, Stephen McGrady so he can recover uh, from this bad, bad cold or flu that he got. Um, so as you know, many, uh, we are here in California, we don't have rain yet. But many places, um, they have rain, they have a very bad uh, weather. And with that comes with a lot of um, a lot, of, a lot of bad flus. Oh my goodness. So let me call my Pastor McCoy um, because I got a lot of stuff to share with you guys before before we finish the show. Oh my God. Guess what happened? Facebook Live is active again. I was just like thinking about it. You know, was I, believe it or not, I was thinking about it, okay? I said, man, a lot of people don't like Vimeo. Well, some of that, but you know, some don't like it. They really find enjoyable watch the show through Facebook Live. And I was just thinking about it. And all of a sudden, I see this thing, my computer going, Facebook Live is active. I was like, what? <laughs> Are you there, sister? Sister? Sister, are you there? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Isn't that something? Hang on. Hang on a second, hang on a second, hang uh, on. Alright. Hang on, hang on. Okay, Facebook Live is active right now. So if you're watching me uh from Vimeo, if you are on my Facebook Live and my Facebook page, go back to Facebook Live. You're gonna enjoy wow. it. Wow. Isn't that something? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> As long as I will last, but I got bad news. People are running away from Facebook. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder yes, it's why. All, it's all over the news. Americans are running away from Facebook. I'm going to share that information with all of you. And that's the reason what I've been saying. Let's walk away. Let's go to a place where they can pay us. And by the way, it's called this part of the show is brought to you by web talk 
Yes, web talk is the new and best place in social media that for free you can subscribe, bring all the people under you, and they will pay you. The first million people that joins web talk will have hundreds of thousands of dollars for lifetime. That is another wealth transfer that I've been talking about. If you are watching my, my uh, video on Vimeo or, or in Facebook, underneath in red, you'll see my landing page. I would really appreciate that you sign under me. If you love my show, please sign under me. If you love my show. If you don't love my show, you can do whatever you want to do because I'm not your daddy, but there you go. <laughs> All right, so that's web talk. And uh, let me explain this in Spanish because people have heard a lot of English. Okay, vamos a empezar a hacer el show, pero primerito vamos a hablar un poquito más de inglés porque vamos a hablar de una palabra profética que habla de la del árbol, el símbolo del arbi. Okay, vamos a hablar del símbolo del arbi. And um, it's going to be really interesting. Um, y como ya, como ya sabes, esta, es, esta parte del show está traído por cortesía de Web Talk. Uh, yo te voy a apreciar mucho si tú te inscribes debajo de mí. Abajo en rojo está el enlace donde tú puedes ir y suscribirte debajo de mí. No te preocupes, no te va a costar absolutamente nada. También te voy a, tra te voy, también te voy a um, agradecer mucho que tú compartas este video en Puerto Rico o en donde quiera que estés. Muévete allí, te van a pagar toda la gente que tú metiste en Facebook, toda la gente la puede meter en WebTalk y la compañía te va a pagar de por vida miles de dólares. Así que allí está mi enlace. All righty then, now we talking. <laughs> okay, now we are going to talk about the symbol of the RB, and that's the oak tree. We discovered it yesterday after four years, <laughs> apparently about four years that I've been trying to find out what is what it was the oak tree, and the oak tree is the symbol, the national tree of the United States. And we know that uh, if it is the oak tree, it means that Donald Trump will trigger the RB. And we got tremendous news. But before I give you that tremendous news, I'm going to share with you the prophetic word of my sister in Christ. But before that, let me show you my computer. Le voy a enseñar mi computadora antes de que empecemos a hablar. Because I have a lot of people telling me, Benny, can you please add me as a, as a friend? If you don't have, let me just show you this. You see this? If you don't have this button, let me just show you this. You need to have active this button right here. It says add friend. How you can have this button? Look, go to YouTube and just type how to enable friends settings on Facebook. It will show you how to enable your friends, your ad friends button. Many of you are coming to me asking me, hey, can you please add me as, a, as your friend? I cannot even add you because your bottom is not enabled. You need to have either this bottom enabled or this bottom enabled. You guys, most of you don't have it because somebody, or maybe you did it, you didn't want to be socialized with anybody. Okay, so you need to enable that button. Another thing you can do is you can click follow. You see that follow? One thing is that you are my friend, and another thing is that you get notification. Click add friend, add me as your friend, I will accept you, and click follow. Anytime that I go live, you will be notified. And how are you gonna be notified? Through this thing right here to this little world, the global, that's all your notifications, okay? That's how you're gonna be notified. 
So whenever you see a red number, that's how you're gonna be, know. You click on that, that notification and will take you to my Facebook Live or even my post. Many people want to see my post, okay? So please do so. Let me explain this in Spanish now because also Latinos don't know what the hell to do. All right. Um, para las personas que me están pidiendo, hey, me puedes poner como tu amistad, yo he encontrado que muchos de ustedes no tienen este botón que se llama Add Friend. Add Friend, no lo tienen uh, inhabilitado. Hay, hay un video, hay videos en YouTube donde te dicen en español cómo inhabilitar los settings o los ajustes en Facebook para que tengas este botón y las personas que tú quieres tener amigos pueden to tocar este botón, ¿ok? Si tú te vas a mi página, a mi página, esta es mi página central, esta es mi pared, tú lo único que tienes que hacer es apretar este botón y también apreté follow, este botón, ¿ok? Porque una cosa es ser mi amistad y otra cosa es tener notificaciones. Las notificaciones las vas a encontrar aquí donde está el globo. Aquí está notification, mira, ahí está. Entonces, ahí es donde tú vas a ver. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes no saben ni cómo navegar en Facebook, y te estoy enseñando cómo hacerlo. Así que tú tienes que cambiar esos settings, esos ajustes dentro de tu página en privacidad. Si no sabes cómo, solamente métete a YouTube y pon cómo inhabilitar el botón de amigos en Facebook. Solamente pon así y te va a dar una lista de, de videos en español cómo inhabilitarlo. Una vez que lo inhabilites, te metes a Divine Intel RB with Benny y a esta página, ¿ok? Y después solamente apretes el botón y si yo te veo, yo te pongo como amigo. Hasta que me que claro, se me acabe la lista de amigos, ¿ok? Um, so, basically, guys, I have a lot of people asking me to, you know, friend, friend them. And I cannot do it because you guys don't have this enabled. You need to have this enabled. Go to YouTube, like I said, and just type on the search bar, just type how to enable my friend button on Facebook, okay? And in English, you will tell, you got to go to your private settings and enable that button. Once you enable that button, don't come on to me and say, hey, please add me as your friend. No, you, go, you come to my wall. How you gonna come to my wall? Just click on my picture, you see that? You click on my picture, and it will take you back to my wall. Click on my picture, it will take you back on my wall. And all you gotta do is click add friend and click follow, just for you to get notifications. And that way when I see you, I will accept you, all right? As you can see right now, you're seeing my Facebook Live. And that's how, how, that's how you're gonna be. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about the oak tree. Vamos a hablar del árbol el símbolo del RB. En la profetisa tiene ahorita una, una, profe, una profecía, una palabra del Espíritu Santo, donde nos va a decir qué significa el árbol. So what, what I find out right now, uh, sister, is that the tree also symbolizes the family. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, so, and, and what else do you have for us? And, and what is God saying through that? He's saying that the family is a key. God is healing families. God is putting families together. Uh, there's a blessing coming upon the families. He's working mightily in that area. I believe truly, Ben, that God is healing and restructuring families so that they can be a powerhouse because of the onslaught that is against the family structure at this time. Yeah, and not only that, uh, not only that, let me tell you something. Um, not only that. Uh, okay. There is something, there is something that, um, that, that God told me, God told me back in uh, December 31st. Yes, oh, no, mm -hmm. December 24th, that was Christmas when I was alone. I was sick. I was alone by myself. Um, and I was really depressed. And God, the first time, he, the, the first, you know, he, I called God, you know, I called God and I said, why are I feeling so depressed, my Lord? I should be celebrating your day, your birthday. You know, not that, that, that God, 
that Jesus was born in Christmas. You know, we don't know yeah. exactly when he was born, right? More it's a point of was, reference. Yeah, it's just a reference. Um, but uh, I was talking to him, and, and he said it very, very, very slowly, but beautifully. You know, he said, "Family is the most important thing for men." Yeah. And 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 I was like shocked. He said, "Family is the most important thing for men," and he was, that was past uh, Christmas. And now that the, the symbol of the RB, the tree, is the symbol of the family. Praise God. You know, this is something beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I respected that the RB had a symbol. But according to the prophet King Clement, he said it himself. You know, we went through it yesterday. And, uh, and I'll tell you guys something, like, um, symbolism has basically a... A matrix and uh, the new paradigm is that symbolism there are symbolisms that you need to not to praise them but uh, that you need to recognize them why God is putting those symbols okay for you to understand the message the deep message why did he chose a tree why did he chose an oak tree so Amen. let me just go through a um, I'm trying to open the, the prophetic word let me read it for you Okay, that'd read, be good. Yeah, I'm going to read the prophetic word of uh, Pastor McCoy, and I'm going to try to translate it in Spanish too. And uh -oh. it says like this. It says, The year of the Lord's favor, 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Praise the Lord. He has set me by up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness from the prisoners to proclaim proclaim the year of the lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our god to confirm to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in zion to best of on them a crowd on beauty instead of hashes, the oil of joy, instead of mourning, and garment of praise, instead of a spirit of despair, they will call oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Wow, this is beautiful. Now, Ben, that, that's another layer of the oak tree because actually we... Or the people, the the uh, people that uh, God is speaking about here, which is us, mm -hmm. um, He is making into oak trees, which is a solid, strong structures. And you know, the Bible actually tells us that when we are fully grown, others will come under. See how the oak tree in your picture, you can come mm -hmm. under the shade and be protected. And that's what happens when we are a strong oak tree in the word of God, in the presence of God, in the voice of God, in the knowledge of God, and in our intimacy and relationship with him. Others come and they want to sit under us. They want to sit with us so that they can be protected and feel the healing and feeling the, feel the covering of our Lord. Uh, through not only through his Holy Spirit, but through the people of God. And so his objective is to to heal his people, like in that scripture that you just read, to heal his people and to turn everything around, to transition them into being strong oak trees where the presence of God abides. And when you walk, you know, in the New Testament, when Peter and uh, walked the streets, his very shadow would heal people. He wouldn't even pray. Just uh, being crossed by his shadow, people would be healed and set free and find Christ. Now, that's what you call incredible power and maturity and anointing. And that's really what he wants every believer to be, not just not just pastors or leaders, but every believer in this end time move of God is to be like a strong oak tree and bring forth the presence of God wherever they go. 
All right, beautiful. Let me just uh, say this in Spanish now. Okay. Okay, esta es la palabra profética de la pastora. Ponga mucha atención. Dice, el año del favor del Señor, 61. El Espíritu del Señor Onipotente está sobre mí, porque el Señor me ha ungido para proclamar buenas noticias a los pobres. Él me ha enviado a vendar a los quebrantados de corazón, proclamar libertad para los cautivos y liberación de la oscuridad para los prisioneros, para proclamar el año del favor de Jehová y el día de venganza de nuestro Dios, para consolar a todos los que lloran, y proveer a aquellos que se afligen en Sion para otorgarles una corona de belleza en lugar de cenizas, el aceite de la alegría en lugar del de luto y una prenda de alabanza en lugar de un espíritu de desesperación. Muchos de ustedes tienen desesperación de salir de la pobreza. Serán llamados robles de justicia, de ahí viene, la, de ahí viene el, el árbol de roble. Serán llamados robles de justicia, una plantación del Señor para la exhibición de su esplendor. Amén. ¿Puedo tener un amén a ustedes? ¿Puedo, ¿Puedo que ustedes puedan darme un amén o un aleluya? Se lo puedo agradecer mucho. All righty. So, you know, he's speaking basically the same thing. There's a lot of people being despaired to get out from poverty. Yes. And amen. This is, a this is a blessing. This is basically the blessing that we are all waiting for. And We're shifting. The, yes, and by the way, uh, this is the things that uh, we need to also focus. We need to focus on God. Once Amen. we get the RB done, um, you need to respect the blessing. Please listen to me. Just like the pastor McGray said, I'm going to repeat it again. A blessing is a blessing as long as you respect it. Amen. If you do not respect that blessing, you will lose it. So if you believe that, have, that you have the bad habit of spending, 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 spending all the time, my suggestion, my recommendation is for you to go to a, a class or how to administer your wealth how to administer your money right now don't even wait for the rb don't wait for that go to a, a, a if it is not education you can also go to a psychologist please and don't get offended don't get offended many of the things that we do as a habit or or a um a, a conduct is because we have psychological problems we all have problems we all have psychological problems the problem is that your our ego is too big to recognize it okay trust me i have gone to a psychologist too it was really hard for me to get rid of the things that i did when i was in the elite it was really difficult for me to go on and you know delete everything reset myself and go on with my life i have a to have a professional Uh, professional uh, people, professional doctors that to help me assimilate my big change because I was not able to change it. I was not able to assimilate it. I actually started to go to a psychologist when I started li re you know, listening to God. And, um, and they found me that I was not crazy. And uh, Praise and they, God. You know, they really, <laughs> yeah, you know, they found me that I was not crazy. They did a lot of tests on me, and he said, no, the, you might be right, Benny, because you just told me something about myself, and I, I haven't told anybody. You know, because while, as I was going to the doctor, my doctor told me things about the doctor. And I <gasps> said, why are you telling me this about the doctor? He said, because you're going to use it. He said, I'm going to use it? I said, yes, you're going to use it. And so I went to the doctor, and the first thing that I thought He was telling me, no, you know, that's, that looked like a, some kind of a mental problem, disorder, you know. <laughs> But uh, the, he changed his mind. Immediately after I told him, God told me that you have this and you have this and you are going to do this. And when I told him, he, he got quiet. He really got quiet. He just looked at me and he said, How, who in the, he even cursed. He said, who in the F told you that? I said, God told me that. 
and he starts start the BS. He said, uh, there is no way. What do you mean no way? And he just looked at me, and uh, then all of a sudden he said, I have not tell anybody about this. Wow. He was having an affair with another woman. Ah. Uh. Okay, and he kept it, he has kept it, he has kept this thing, you know, hidden for about three years. And I told him, look, you're doing this with this woman. His na her name is this and this, and my Lord is telling me that you're gonna get caught. You're gonna lose your family. And he wanted you to know that he's alive, and he wants you to go to come to him. And, Praise uh, God. And ever since then, he's been my best friend. <laughs> All right, so that's what happened to me. All right, so. Let me explain this in Spanish. Aquí estamos hablando de que este es básicamente la profecía de Dios. Te está diciendo que te va a quitar de la pobreza, de la pobreza. Mira, te voy a decir algo, hermano. Si tú sabes que esto es tu bendición, va a ser bendición tan pronto tú la respetas. Si tú no respetas tu bendición, lo vas a perder. Si tú crees que tú tienes el mal hábito de gastar, gastar, gastar y gastar todo el tiempo, muchos de ustedes lo tienen, porque muchos de ustedes solamente viven de un paycheck, de un salario, y nomás pasa una semana y ya se acabó. Entonces tú tienes un mal hábito. No te quiero ofender. El propósito es que te quiero ayudar. Si tú tienes ese problema, yo te sugiero que vayas al colegio, que agarres uh, clases de cómo administrar tu dinero o vayas a un psicólogo, si tú crees que no te puedes quitar eso y no te vayas a, a ofender. Todos tenemos problemas psicológicos, vivimos en un mundo muy difícil. Muchas de las cosas no podemos asimilarlas. Por ejemplo, yo, yo no pude asimilar el hecho que Dios me estaba hablando. Yo fui a un psicólogo. Yo lo reporté muchas veces que era muy difícil para mí asimilar que Dios me estaba hablando. Cuando llegué a donde el doctor, Dios me dijo, dile al doctor esto. Y me lo, yo le pregunté, ¿por qué quieres que le diga esto? Tú lo vas a necesitar, me dijo Dios. Entonces, cuando llegué a donde el doctor, el doctor me empezó a decir de que a, a lo mejor yo tenía un problema mental. Porque ellos no creen de que... Alguien puede realmente estar escuchando la voz de Dios. Y entonces, de repente, yo le dije a él, mira, Dios me dijo que tú tienes otra mujer, se llama así, 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 y te, tu mujer te va a encontrar y vas a perder tu familia. Y cuando le dije eso, ahí acabó todo. Ese hombre se quedó con los ojos, que como estaba viendo al diablo, y después se calmó y aceptó que realmente estaba escuchando algo, porque él lo había ocultado por todo el mundo y lo había ocultado por más de tres años. Ok, entonces así fue como pasó y desde entonces no somos buenos amigos. Dios le dijo que quería que regresara con él porque él antes era cristiano, él antes era cristiano. Entonces uh, regresó a la iglesia, no regresó a ser católico, él regresó a la iglesia y desde entonces somos buenos, buenos amigos, buenos hermanos. All right, so I just said everything in Spanish. And that's a beautiful, beautiful, um, that's a beautiful prophecy. Yeah, amen. Uh, straight uh, straight yeah. from the word. You know, there's three um, three things, and uh, I apologize. I was out uh, with friends this afternoon, okay. but uh, I didn't hear, I didn't hear Pastor McGrary's uh, complete uh, word. But there's three words that... Um, are key for this year, Ben. Okay. Uh, very simply, they're realignment, restoration, and restitution. That's it. Realignment, re restoration, and restitution. And that's what the people should believe for this year, which I believe, of course, is uh, the RV and the GCR. But God wants to realign lives, ministries, businesses, callings, all kinds of things, you know, inner emotional health, physical health, families, 
on and on and on. God is going to do some amazing things this this coming year. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, Pastor McGrady said that, oh, you're saying it. I got a sound problem with sound coming from you. It's noisy and goes loud and soft. Okay, that's because when I get out from the, um, hold on, let me, let me fix that. Um, I think it's a Skype problem. No. Uh, no? Hold on. Let me, let me go ahead. Okay, let me see. Oh, one, two, one, two. Okay. I think if this is it. All right. If you're having problems with uh, my audio, please let me know. I'm not trying to sound because I, I, last night I listened to myself. It sounds awful. It was too loud. So I lowered the sound and I apologize. I don't have some time, sa time to test my system, okay? Uh, si ustedes creen que la, el sonido está muy bajo, por favor, díganme. No me da tiempo de arreglar el sonido cuando me voy en vivo. All right, so let me tell you something. Let me just say this. The show, tonight's show is called The Surrender Awakening. Why The Surrender Awakening? Somebody's going to surrender. <laughs> I wonder <And> who. <laughs> so, let me explain to you one more time, gurus, why you're not exchanging until the Lord says so. Shall we? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do it. Let's do this, okay? Amen. Let me put all the pieces together again. Let's do it. And um, watch this beautiful, beautiful video. Vamos a poner una preciosidad de video y te voy a decir por qué. Una vez más, Dios está destruyendo los mentirosos, okay? Okay. Let's do this, people. Let's do this. <laughs> We're waiting. Good afternoon. Good evening, brothers and sisters around the world via Denarla and hope this finds you well. This is Admin from RealCommunityEngagement.com, where the Denarla and community meets to openly share and freely exchange information, intel, rumor tell, anything else we want from all the other calls and chats and Skype rooms and forums, etc. We do it in our live chat room and also on our live call. Both are open 24-7 and everyone in the community is welcome. It's all free. We don't sell anything and we will never ask for donations. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to roll over to FaceIraq.net. And you can see here we got a nice picture of a body and President Trump. The article headline reads, A close source, a body will visit Trump on September 13 to convince him of an emergency government. Okay. Baghdad, all get press. The source close to Prime Minister Hutter Abadi said Saturday that he would visit Trump on September 13 to convince him of an emergency government. Prime Minister Hutter Abadi will visit America on September 13 to meet with President Donald Trump, in an attempt to convince him of an emergency government in Iraq, the source told The Guardian. It is noteworthy that the House of Representatives held an extraordinary session earlier Saturday on the conditions of the province of Basra in the presence of Prime Minister Haider Abadi and a number of ministers concerned on the crisis. While the coalition called Sasson Abadi and his cabinet to resign because of what happened in the province of Basra, the burning of many of the headquarters of the parties and places of the state, which coincided with demonstrations and protests against the deterioration of service conditions in the province, and the fall of many demonstrators between the dead and wounded. Well, what say you guys? Okay. Now let me call my Pastor McCoy again. Shall we? Yes, we're going to call her again because I had to kick her out. Because unfortunately, the sound doesn't good. Doesn't. I need to fix that. I promise I'm gonna fix it. Okay. Uh, hello. Are you there? Hello. Are you there? Sorry, I forgot to turn my mic on. Oh. I'm here. Okay. My dear sister in Christ. Yes, sir. Can you please remind my people what was the day that I gave you? September the 13th. Bingo. 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 Hey, <laughs> Philip Tilton, your sources didn't know this? Your deep sources didn't know this? Hey, what about you, Tony? Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. At that date, all the people will come to the call center because they will be waiting 24-7, right? Hey, what about you, Bruce? What about you? Oh, I got it. 
yeah, you will tell the whole world how much money they're going to get because you are watching on the monitors the rate. What about you, Joseph? Don't even go there, right? Because on, on September 13, you're going to tell your people that the Zimbabwe will be exchanged or redeemed because you're the Mr. Redeem Center. And what about all of you calls? You're going to keep calling and you're going to keep lying to the people that the banks will be exchanging on that date. Isn't it? I know why it is your bull crap. I don't need to be a prophet and I don't need to be a psychic. I can smell it from miles and miles away. And trust me, you smell really, really disgusting. You and your lies. This is divine intel. Stop lying and come to the kingdom of God. Come to the kingdom of God. <laughs> he will set you free. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will make you happy. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will make you glorious. We're going to glorify his name. We're going to sing. We're going to cry. We're going Amen. to glorify his name because he is worthy. Amen. He is worthy. He is glorious. Okay? He is worthy. So September the 13th, right? But wait. That's the date. Wait. Let me tell you what is this scenario. Can I, can I tell you what is this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You're hilarious today. Oh, my God. Let me explain this in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Okay, Thank you, Lord. Estoy aquí. Me estoy, me estoy, estoy gozándome. <laughs> porque una vez más estamos asesinando las mentiras de los gurus. Porque me han atacado que yo no tengo fuentes. Yo tengo una semana haber dicho que me dieron el 13 de septiembre. Y yo te dije, yo no sé qué va a pasar. Pero ¿sabes por qué te dije que yo no sé por qué no va a pasar? Porque si yo te digo lo que va a pasar, todos los gurús lo van a repetir y te van a volver a engañar. ¿Ves lo que te digo? Yo soy inteligente. No porque me la llevo de inteligente, es porque he emprendido yo a hueler la mierda desde miles de millas que yo estoy. Te van a engañar otra vez, te van a decir que para el 13 o el 14 vas a cambiar. Te van a decir todo tipo de pura mierda, de pura, pura, pura mentira, porque esos todos están hechos. No tienen nada. Nada. Y te lo dije. ¿Ok? Por eso este show se está yendo viral. Porque todo lo que se habla acá está saliendo. Todo está saliendo. Te voy a decir cómo está el escenario, por qué Donald Trump va a llegar a, a hablar con Abadi, por qué lo va a hacer. Pero antes lo voy a aplicar en inglés. Con mucha atención. So let me just tell you why Donald Trump will go to talk to a body on September the, the 13th. Please pay attention. Number one, Donald Trump, he is not to convince anybody. I'm going to repeat that again. Donald Trump is not a man to convince anybody. He just asked one time, and if you don't listen, he will force you. Did he ask China to show up their real value? Yes, they, he did. Yes, he did. Did he ask China, stop manipulating your currencies? Yes, he did. It's on the news. This is no lie. 
He's on the news. He been accusing China for manipulating the currencies, his currencies. Did he ask China? Yes, he did. He did ask China in a very beautiful way, respectful way. And after that, since China didn't give a damn, he started the trade war. Because you don't mess around with Donald Trump. Okay? Did he ask all the countries right now that are devaluating the currencies, that are falling for the currencies? Did he ask, come and show your real value? Yes, he did. He even came out with a law in the beginning of his administration. Google it. That will only allow the United States to make business for countries that will reflect the real value. The real value. Or are those countries that will reflect if they have oil, gold, diamonds, you name it. That is why I'm killing the gurus and the lies. You are not going to exchange your dinars. You are not going to exchange anything. Try to justify that you are exchanging for a worthless piece of shit. How are you going to exchange it? How? Only in your fairy tales. Only in your lies. You guys are doing an excellent job making yourself look like a complete idiot. Yes, you are all a clown. You all are a liars. This is what they hate me. Because I asked them nicely, stop lying to the people. And since they don't want to stop lying, here you go. So let me tell you what he's going to do in Iraq. He's going to come over to Iraq and he's going to tell in his face. And let me just tell you what happened after this. Hold on. He's going to tell about in his face. Look, you release the real value of the dinar. Or, I'm going to destroy your economy. And I'm going to remove you from the government. Are you listening? He's going to come over and tell him in his face. I'm going to remove you from the government. I'm going to destroy your economy. Because I know that you are making deals with Iran. So you better release your, your real value. Oh, I'm going to get you. Let me just give you the other news that just came out. But let me explain this in Spanish. Be patient. ¿Por qué Avari se va a encontrar el 13 de septiembre con Donald Trump? Donald Trump lo va a amenazar. Donald Trump no tiene que pedirle nada a nadie o tratar de convencerlo. La noticia dice aquí que va a llegar a Irak el 13 de septiembre para convencerlo a hacer un, a hacer un gobierno emergente. Él no está para estar pidiendo o, eh, o, ¿cómo se llama?, convenciendo a nadie. Él pide una tan sola vez y si no te gusta, él te va a destruir. Lo hizo con China cuando le dijo que dejaran de manipular su moneda. Lo hizo con otros países. Lo mismo. ¿Y ahora qué ves? La guerra comercial. Esos son hechos. No son cuentos de hadas. Entonces, cuando llega el 13 de septiembre, le va a decir a Donald Trump, o, re, o dejas subirle el precio al dinar, o te voy a quitar del gobierno, o voy a destruir tu economía, porque yo ya sé que tú estás haciendo tratos con Irán. Ponte atención. Él ya sabe que está haciendo tratos con Irán. Y ahora, espérate, que te voy a decir otra cosa más. Let me just tell you something. Let me remind you something. Prophet Solomon. Yes. Prophet Solomon said that uh, she had a dream. During the dream, she dreamed of Donald Trump being with a body. And then, a body did not want to raise the value. He did not want to raise the value, but he did. 
And then after he raised the value, he said this, I did not want to do this, but I have to do this. I'm glad that I did it because now the people will be able to purchase. But now, what is going to happen to me? That's what he said. It's coming, people. It's coming. Okay? It's coming. September 13, I told you. I did not know because if I tell you that this was going to happen, watch every single retard guru out there telling you you're going to exchange by the 14 or the 15 or the 13 because I know them. I know shit when I smell it, and I can smell shit thousands of miles away. This is the reason why I say I don't know. Don't ask me. Because I know they manipulate my show. They manipulate my information. I know them. They're all watching my show. Because they got shit. They got nothing. Didn't I just told you that? This is divine intel. All right? So it's coming. Now, should I give you more news? <laughs> You're funny. Yes. <laughs> Let me give I'm the you voice of news. the Jets. Let me give you more news, people. Yeah. Oh, yes. Only the truth will make you free. Hold on there. Hold on. Where it, where it was? Hold on. Let me see. If I, ha I probably think I have it in, in video here. Because uh, I got to talk about the, the technology that a lot of people are asking me. Okay? So don't worry. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to forget about it. Um, okay. Hold on. Let me see. All right. So I don't know. Have you ever... Uh, does anybody have found that anybody uh, decoded a message from my brother in Christ, John Nigo? I haven't heard. We haven't heard anything. If anybody no, knows, no. please let me know. Let me know, please. Nobody I told me. Know. I want to know who was the lucky one. All right. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Let me just watch this video. Let's watch this video. Vamos a ver un video. Let's watch this video, please. All righty. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers and sisters around the world via Denarland. Hope this finds you well. This is Admin from RealCommunityEngagement.com, where the Denarland community meets to openly share and freely exchange information, intel, rumor tell, and anything else we want from all the other calls and chats and Skype rooms and forums, etc. We do it in our live chat room and also on our live call. Both are open 24-7, and everyone in the community is welcome. It's all free, we don't sell anything, and we will never ask for donations. All right, guys, this article comes to us from FaceIraq.net. The headline reads, Magna to Mimi, who says that there is a financial crisis in Iraq is a liar. Mm -hmm. Baghdad, all got press. The deputy MP of the coalition of Majid al-Tamimi on Saturday said that there is a financial crisis in Iraq as a liar. Tamimi said in an interview during the special session on the conditions of Basra and attended by all got press that... Quote, talk about the lack of funds in Iraq is not true, and who says that is a liar, end quote. Okay, so let's talk about liars, shall we? All righty, this will be the last video because after that we're just going to go through the whole evidence of what's happening right now. We're going to have to go through this piece by piece so you can understand what we're doing here. All right, so, sister, are you there? I'm here. Okay. So, it said the deputy of the coalition on Saturday said that, there are financial, that there's a financial crisis in Iraq is a liar. Wow. Tommy said that in the interview during the session, the condition of Basra is attended by all God press and talk about the lack of funds in Iraq. It's not true, and who said that is a lie? Now, let's talk about liars. <laughs> who was the lady who told you that this is a scam? <laughs> I even played her video. No, 
know I'm not attacking her. Don't get me wrong. I'm not attacking her. <laughs> but uh, somebody got to tell you the truth. The establishment have gurus that are part agents of the establishment. Let, let me just tell you this. The establishment have people that you call gurus, they're part of the establishment. They, they are secret misinformant agents, okay? They will try to convince you that this is not going to happen. I told you so. I even told you they have a master plan and it's not, it right now it's even implemented, watch. They either going to bring up nationally, bring all the places, the government places, because right now the establishment is still in, in control right now, but you know, eventually will not be in control anymore. But since they're in control right now, they're gonna go after every single guru out there, okay? They're gonna go to after every single guru out there. And just remember this. I'm doing this because it's my religion. Are you listening, uh, establishment? If you try to block me, if you try to silence me, you are violating my rights of freedom of religion. This is my religion, establishment. Okay? Amen. Don't you dare, don't you dare try to block me and try to intimidate me. This is my religion. That's between my Lord and you. Okay? I'm going through because we believe in the blessing of God. We believe in a blessing that was given by prophets. We don't believe in the elites. We don't believe in our sources. Do we mention sources and dates? Yes. But that's totally separate. We're trying to put all the pieces together here so we can know when we are going to receive our blessing. So establishment, and you know who you are because you are listening to my show. I heard your voice last time. I got your call last time. I'm responding to your call and I heard your voice. Don't mess with my Lord. Don't even go there. Either way, the people will know. Let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Let my people go. Now that you have it, whatever you want to do, it is up to God. So, we've been putting the pieces together here. The nice way and the really ugly way. My intentions is not to be controversial at all. My intentions is for all of you to focus on the living God, the truth. And why am I showing a why Jesus? <laughs> well, right now I'm gonna tell you why. Because I know information that you don't. You can disagree with me if you want to. That's totally fine. You're not attacking me, okay? My brother in Christ, John Nigo, disagree. He already talked about that probably Jesus is black. And no, I never said that Jesus was black. I said, this is where my words were. I said, I like the idea that Jesus might be black. That's what I said. I never said Jesus was black. I said, I like the idea that Jesus might be black. And why? Because Jesus himself told me the black people are their royalty. Am I contradicting myself? No. Black people are the royalty. They are the original queens and kings. 
according to the voice that I heard. And he said he loves his black people. He called him Nubians to the women. Okay? But unfortunately, I got information that it might offend a lot of people. I'm just sharing information. Do I believe that Jesus is not black? I don't know. I really don't care. I don't know. I don't care if Jesus is white, black, fat, Chinese, um, Creole, you name it. I don't care. Latino looking, I don't care. His skin color and his race mean nothing to me. His message, his love, his power, that means everything to me. I want to make that very clear because what I'm going to show you, you probably saw it already. Okay? You probably saw it already, but you probably didn't see this information. So what I'm going to show you guys is something that I got a long, long time ago. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all the pieces together and the information I'm going to give you of that technology that is about 2,000 years ago, around 2,000 years ago. And then I'm going to show you what Mark Taylor says about it. Let me put all the pieces together because even Prophet Mark Taylor even talk about it. Okay? That will affect all the churches, especially my church, the Catholic Roman Church. Okay? So let me explain. Let me tell you something. My witness is McCoy. I have talked about this information, well, part of this information to McCoy. Remember that? Yes. Okay? And uh, this information I don't share with a lot of people. I don't. Okay? Because it's, it's hard for many people to accept it or maybe even op being open about it. Okay? It's very hard. I totally understand it. All right? I totally understand it. Um, but that's the new paradigm. We've been talking about the new paradigm for a long, long time. And the new paradigm, if you're not ready, is going to affect you. That's the new re reality. So, I'm just going to share this information. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just going to share this information. Once again, I want to make clear that even my brother in Christ, John Nigger, which I respect and love a lot, I'm not trying to discredit his information. I'm not trying to attack him. Are you kidding me? I love the man. Okay, I have said it all the time. I respect him a lot. And, um, but I wanna share this information. I just wanna share it. Um, because a lot of you, I have received hundreds of emails asking me, send me the information about the technology. Well, I'm not sending you. I'm gonna broadcast it. I don't have the time to send it to almost 3,000 emails, okay? So that's what I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share. Uh, now let me explain this because the total information is in English. Uh, so let me, it's going to be kind of difficult for me to explain it in Spanish, but I'm going to try my best. Um, lo que voy a enseñar ahorita es la información que yo di acerca de la tecnología. Y es una tecnología que tiene de más de 2,000 años. Toda la información es en inglés. Voy a tratar todo lo posible de explicarte de qué se trata. La información que voy a compartir va a ofender a muchos. Así que, por favor, no mates al mensajero. Solamente estoy compartiendo esta información. Esta es parte de tu nuevo paradigma. ¿Ok? Solo estoy compartiendo información. No quiero herir tus creencias religiosas. Porque muchos de ustedes creen que Cristo fue, no sé, fue blanco o fue negro. Realmente a mí no me importa qué raza fue él. A mí lo que me importa fue el mensaje de él, el poder de él y el mi salvador. ¿Ok? Así que te voy a decir cómo esta información ha sido destruida en toda la internet y te voy a decir por qué lo están haciendo, porque el Vaticano lo ha manipulado por todos lados. Yo soy católico, 
Yo nunca te he negado que no soy católico. Yo soy católico romano apostólico, ¿ok? Y yo sé, yo estoy consciente que es lo que está pasando ahorita. Hasta un, uh, te voy a poner también el video de un profeta que se llama Mark Taylor, protestante, donde él habla lo que va a pasar a la iglesia católica, al Vaticano, no a la iglesia, pero al Vaticano. Y todo lo que estamos poniendo ahorita puesto aquí es todas las piezas para que entiendas cómo se va a hacer todo esto, ¿ok? Así que deja, voy a poner el video. All right, so, let me just play the, there are two videos, ¿ok? Let me play the first video. The first video, I'm going to have to <laughs> shut you down again. <laughs> I know, it's okay. All right, so, so sorry for that. I'll come uh, back it's okay. I'll come back to you, I'll come back to you. All right, so. Um, let me explain to you what's going on. First of all, the above information that I'm going to give you has been, have been destroyed by many people. But I have told you all the time, the new paradigm will, will show you if what, what, what you thought it was a lie is going to be true. Okay, that's the new paradigm. Whatever you thought it was a lie is going to be true because the truth needs to be basically been told. And a lot of people are going to be affected by it. A lot of people. Uh, so let me see if I can find the other, the other video. Oh, it's right here. Okay, good. All right, I got it. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this video. I want you to look at this video, and then I'm going to play the second video. And I'm going to tell you step by step why they did what they did, and people don't know about it. All right? So let's take a look.
Okay, now let me show you the second part of the video. Um, and I'm going to explain to you why they say the things that they say. Okay? I'm going to explain it to you. One second. Just give me a second so I can find the other video I'm about to show you. All right. It's in English. So enjoy it. Initially, the Vatican was suspected of burying sexual abuse scandals to protect its priests. Lately, the Vatican is suspected of covering up the existence of a time machine, or more specifically, a time viewer known as the chronovisor. The machine has an interface like a television screen, which can be used to observe and record scenes from Earth's history. Some of these scenes could be used to blackmail leaders of government. Father Pellegrino Ernetti was a Benedictine monk in Italy and a published authority as a musicologist. In 1965, he was working at the Catholic University of Milan, transferring wire recordings of Gregorian chants to the modern medium of magnetic tape. The university archivist, Father Agostino Gamelli, was checking the quality of the tape transfer when he heard the voice of his deceased father on the tail end of one recording. Gamelli's father was not attempting to contact his son from the spirit world. He was arguing with another man about the price of shoe wax. Gamelli's father had been a cobbler since the voice did not exist on the original wire recording, Gamelli believed the magnetic tape had captured an event from the past. He believed it to be a reward from God. Father Ernetti, on the other hand, believed this phenomena just might be scientifically reproducible. He petitioned his bishop to assemble a team of scientists to explore the possibility of fabricating a time recorder. Normally, the bishop would not have bothered to consider the fruits of science over the truth of the Bible. But Ernetti was prepared for this objection. Ernetti made a promise to the bishop that his only goal was to obtain an audio recording at the scene of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The deep coffers of the Vatican were used in funding a secret project, tasking some of the most eminent scientists of the age. According to Father Ernetti, this included Werner von Braun, the German rocket engineer who defected to the United States, and J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. The scientific team discovered that sounds and images of past events left a permanent record behind in the residual form of electromagnetic radiation. A device was built to register, amplify, and display the source of these invisible waves. They called it the chronovisor. The first test was a visual journey of only 150 years into history. As the vacuum tubes of the chronovisor hummed while warming up, a fuzzy picture of Napoleon Bonaparte came gradually into focus, except that there were two of him. The team was mortified. Something was wrong with the machine. But Oppenheimer said no. There is a little-known story that Napoleon sent a body double in his place to suffer the sentence of his final exile on the island of St. Helena. Now, he said, we know for sure the story is true. 
when these scientists were done experimenting for the day, Father Ernetti would be allowed to use the chronovisor freely. He wanted to see and hear musical instruments of old in the process of being played. At first he searched in vain among the marketplaces of ancient Greece. He was looking in the wrong place. He discovered that amphitheaters of the ancients were not used exclusively for presenting plays. They were also the preferred venue for musical concerts. As a Roman Catholic monk, he was also well-versed in Latin. That is how Ernecti was able to transcribe the complete script of Thiestes as it was being performed two centuries B.C. Thiestes was one of the lost plays of Quintus Ennius, the poet laureate of the Roman Republic. Father Ernecti also kept his promise to the bishop. In 1969, the same year celebrated for man landing on the moon, the chronovisor was used to document in the backwaters of the Roman Empire, an event almost 2,000 years past, of the crucifixion of a man sentenced to death by the governor of Judea. Now, let me explain to you something. That is not the original, the original uh, footage of the chronovisor. The chronovisor. It is not the original footage. It was just displayed as demonstration. The original footage has about 700 years old. The chronovisor is a technology given to the monks, basically to the Catholic monks, by aliens. They did not know how to use that device because it's a big, it was a big device. So they ultimately what they did was they dismantled the machine. They dismantled the machine and they created a blueprint. As the years were going by, the blueprint ended up in the Vatican. It was around 50 years and they actually used the same image that they recorded long time ago, but I'm talking about 700 years ago. And the footage of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ was kidnapped, was stolen, okay? Because the Vatican did not want you to know what happened, okay? He did not, they did not want you to know what happened during the crucifixion. Trust me, everything that the Bible tells you is showing there. But there are some things that are missing during the, cru the crucifixion uh, in the footage that this machine, this alien giving machine was given to, to the monks, to the first Catholics in the history. After they did that, and that to be, like I told you, like a blueprint, and the Vatican actually created a whole machine and they started, they started actually using it. Uh, that was when the cabal came over and took the machine and used it for their advantage. The cabal has been basically controlling the, the future, but there's something that you don't know. They, been, they can see what the future is going to be looking like because this is an alien technology, but they cannot change the future. They can try to change it, but they've been already been, they already know that they cannot alter the future. They cannot do that. So they know that they are about to end. Okay? They are know they are about to end. Their control is about to end. Um, and basically, this machine was given by the aliens so people can understand what was the purpose of the history. So you will wake up and notice how things actually were 
were done in the past. There are many information I cannot share with you. I'm not trying to be controversial, but I'm just telling you this, okay? I'm just telling you this. The, um, when they, they have discredited this machine, they call it that it's fake, and the picture of Jesus Christ, they say it's fake, and all of that. But uh, let me just tell you something. The reason why that, the reason why uh, Padre Giuliani, or what, I remember what his name is, he said that they have 50 years developing this, that was a lie because he couldn't say that it was given by aliens, okay? He just couldn't say that. That is why he lied. The picture, according, this is the information that I'm sharing, the picture that it shows that they saying that is fake is real. Jesus Christ was had a white texture. Okay, he had a white texture, and from that face, a lot of uh, of the Christ used in the Catholic Church were used. Now, as a Protestant, you know that the Vatican has the biggest library in the planet. As a protester, you know that we keep a lot of information that none of you know. I'm talking about the Vatican. Okay? So I will go ahead and I'm gonna finish the video and I will tell you what's gonna happen because even Mark Taylor say so. Mark Taylor mentioned that there will be an archaeological discovery. He called it like that. I'm gonna play the video for you to even hear it for yourself. He called it that there will be an archaeological discovery. Why is gonna be an archaeological discovery? Because when they find out that this device has more than 2,000 years, it's an archaeological device. Within that, that same device, it will shake all the churches around the world, all the Christian churches, not only Catholic. But it also will it will shake the Protestants, the div uh, all of you guys, okay? Because it's going to reveal something that you never thought you ever seen that, okay? And there will be not one discovery; there will be three discoveries, three. Okay, so just to let you know, this is the information I'm sharing with you. So let me let me let me finish the video after I explain in Spanish. La, el video que está viendo, supuestamente fue, eh, el video no viene de esta, de esta máquina que se llama el, el, um, narco, el, el Norco Vision, el, el, el Narco Vision. Es una máquina que básicamente es como una máquina del tiempo. A, captura las imágenes y los videos los captura porque están todos registrados en algo que se llama matriz universal, que está básicamente arriba del espacio. ¿Ok? Todos los grandes eventos de la historia fueron ca captados por esta máquina. Esta máquina tiene una procedencia extraterrestre. Fue, fue dado a monjes de la iglesia católica hace más de dos mil años. Esta máquina fue usada por el Vaticano y hasta ahorita, bueno, no fue, fue usada por el Vaticano, pero recientemente, hace unos 70 años o, o 100 años, El cabal vino y se los quitó. Desde entonces ha estado manejando los grandes sucesos del mundo. Ha estado usando esta máquina porque quiere y le gusta manipular los tiempos y las, y las cosas que pasan. Lo malo es que ellos pueden saber, ellos, lo, ellos pueden saber el pasado y pueden saber también el, el futuro. Lo malo es que no pueden alterarlo. Ellos ya trataron de hacerlo con el nuevo 11. Lo trataron de hacer y no pudieron alterarlo. ¿Ok? Por eso que ellos saben perfectamente bien que su control ya va a acabar. El video que usted está viendo atrás no viene de esa máquina. Solamente fue puesto para como demostración. La foto de Jesucristo sí es real, según la información que me dieron a mí. Jesucristo fue blanco o de apariencia blanca. ¿Ok? Y ese mismo rostro fue usado por muchos, por cientos de años, por la iglesia católica apostólica romana para usarla en la iglesia como la demostración de las estatuas, ¿ok? Entonces, de ahí viene porque 
se presenta un Jesucristo blanco. No viene porque te quieren quitar el crédito que tal vez pudo haber sido Cristo negro. A mí me gusta la idea que podría haber sido negro, pero la información que te estoy dando es contraria. Así que, por favor, no te quiero que te ofendas, ¿ok? All right. So, let me just play that again. Unfortunately for the bishop, the tape of this event disappeared, except for this photograph, preserved by Arnetti. Okay, so that's the face of Jesus Christ. He had white texture, and he's looking to the sky as he was dying. Okay, he was dying at that moment. That, that picture has been discredited many times. Like I said, it is a genuine picture because I saw it myself a lot of other evidence that I cannot share with you because they just shared it to me while I was in the lead. Um, but uh, that picture is genuine. Okay, I'm not trying to discredit anybody else's information. I'm just sharing information. Please don't get mad with me. All right? And um, este es por lo que estoy diciendo. Esta es la foto que te vengo diciendo. Y esta es la foto que han usado muchas iglesias para hacer las estatuas de Cristo. Esta foto fue tomada mientras él moría. Okay? All right. So, let me continue with the video. So basically, that's the that's the basically of the video I wanted to show you. Um, now let's talk about Mark Taylor. All right, let's talk about Mark Taylor. Uh, one second. I have Mark Taylor in an uh, interview, and the reason why I'm gonna play Mark Taylor is for you to know the possibilities that. What he actually prophesied will come true. That's the possibilities, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and try to look for Mark Taylor video, if I can find it. The chronovision, that's what it's called, chronovision. Uh, hold on. I cannot find the, the video. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Okay, I got it right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. All right, so enjoy the video. I'm going to show you. Hold on. So I just created this dope website with Wix. And let me just keep it. I'm not going to stop it right here because he's going to talk about his prophecy. Please pay attention. It's in English only. And I'm going to tell you what he's talking about, okay? All right. If that makes sense, it does make sense. I want to move on to your uh, back to the rescue mission um, that you were talking about. Right. And this one involves this one involves because uh, you told me about this in the pre interview. This involves the um, the the uh, the Catholic religion and actually the Pope. Uh, I'm a Correct. former Catholic and the pedophile priest thing and how they handle that. Just uh, right. I'm still a Christian, but I'm not a Catholic. And I had I I have a lot of Catholic friends. I like Catholics. I just right. don't like I don't like the top management. Uh, right, and right. this pope has gotten a lot of criticism from inside the Catholic Church. Right. Catholics have been more critical of Pope Francis than anybody else. Right. Because he says things that aren't in the Bible. I right. mean, they're not wrong because I think they're wrong. They're wrong because I can read the Bible. I can read, right. I can read what Jesus said. And so it's, uh, he's supposed to be the vicar of Christ, but he's like the vicar of Satan. Right. Uh, I, I'm sorry to say that, but you have a, a prophecy about about Rome, about, uh, yes, about the correct. Vatican. Let's hear it. Uh, I wrote it January 25th, 2018, and it's called All Roads Lead to Rome. And it says, the Spirit of God says, the Pope and the Vatican. That's right, the Pope and the Vatican are not furthering my kingdom, but are aiding the kingdom of darkness. Many are saying that this is the last Pope, but it's not for reasons they think. This will be the last Pope for what I, the Lord God, am about to do. I will expose this Pope and all those under his command for all the corruption he and the Vatican have been involved in for centuries. The Spirit of God says there is a shaking and a quaking coming to this Pope and the Vatican. 
for I will split the Vatican and its leadership wide open for the entire world to see the inner workings of this ancient beast. This pope, the Vatican, and all its leadership will come crumbling down. I will pull back the veil to show how deep and dark the deception has been. You whisper in your inner chambers. We answer to no one. No one is above us. No one can hold us accountable. I, the Lord God, see it all, and the time has come when I now, when I will now hold you accountable for your darkness. This exposure will be of such magnitude that the people will say, What do we do now? Where do we go now? We want nothing to do with this. We have no religion now. Millions will walk away from their religion, as this will affect other religions as well. The Spirit of God says, Is my army ready? Are you ready to receive these people? Are you ready to receive my harvest that is going to take place from this exposure? Prepare yourselves for the tsunami of people that will be starving for me and have no place to turn. Prepare now. All roads lead to Rome. The Spirit of God says there is a dig, an archaeological find that is coming in an underground vault, which will be so cataclysmic that it will rock the Christian world. The answer lies between Jerusalem and Vatican City. There is a archaeological discovery that will shake the world. That device has more than 2,000 years. And there's more because they're going to find something that is going to shake all the churches. I don't want to sound controversial, but I can tell you what it is. One of the things that they're going to find is about Mary, the Virgin Mary. And that will shake a lot of all my brothers in Christ. That's all I'm going to share with you. Okay? That's all I'm going to share with you. Um... Saint Malachi, Saint Malachi, he actually prophesies about this. What Mark, my brother in Christ, uh, Mark Taylor, is repeating right now is basically prophesizing. He's already been known by us, the Catholics. About four or five hundred years ago, this saint in the Catholic Church prophesied the same thing. Okay, so this is not new. Many of my brothers, uh, uh, my brothers, ca my Catholic brothers, they know what I'm talking about. All right, so we got a potential shakeup in the world, and the reason why Catholics will say we don't have no religion is because the Vatican is going to be destroyed. It's going to basically it's going to they they're going to burn it. They're going to burn it. They're going to destroy. They're going to destroy the Vatican, and we are going to end up to be the remnant. The Catholic remnants. There will be three groups that will be the remnants. There will be the Catholic remnants, the Protestants, and the Jews. It is in the Bible. It has been also prophesied by another prophet, another Catholic prophet. Way before Mark Taylor even talked about it, he actually came out and said his prophecy that Catholics all around the world will end up like Jews, like the Jewish people, all around the world, with no church, with no place to praise, to praise. And we're also going to be, um, we are going to be persecuted. We are going to be persecuted by some uh, indoctrine dogma Protestants, and we're going to also be persecuted by the establishment. Okay, because we believe in not in the Vatican, but we believe in the Catholicism, the Catholic faith. Okay, so we're going to end up in like this because we failed to our Lord. We failed to our Lord by le by letting the cabal taking control. Okay, once again. We used to, we used to um, represent the church of God, or the living God on earth. But that was a long time ago. Now, 
we don't represent it because of the corruption in the Vatican. So that's how God is going to basically remove and reset the whole thing. All right? So that's why I show you the technology before. They already know what's going to happen. They already know what's going to happen, guys. Okay, there's nothing hidden from them. They already know what's going to happen. They already know about the reset, about, and uh, whenever they find something that is going to shake the world, they, call, they always will come out and try to get advantage of it. That's the reason why I keep telling you. Whenever they create something, they will benefit from it. And whenever they collapse something, they will always benefit from the collapse. Because they know how everything's going to end up because of that machine. All right? I hope that everybody understood right. Um, el profeta Mark Taylor dice allí básicamente lo que le va a pasar a la iglesia católica romana, el Vaticano. Va a revelar y van a encontrar un artefacto arqueológico. Él lo dijo acá. El artefacto arqueológico va a ser lo que te acabo de enseñar. Es un, una máquina del tiempo donde el cabal puede básicamente mirar el pasado y el presente y hasta el futuro. Y ellos han, han venido manejando todo esto. Ellos saben, por eso que te venido diciendo que cada vez que va a caer algo, ellos se benefician y cuando ellos van a crear algo, ellos siempre se van a beneficiar porque ellos saben cómo manejar esto. Lo malo es que no van a poder manejar el colapso de que ellos no quieren que pase. ¿Ok? Porque de todos modos Dios va a tener control y va a destruir. Otra de las cosas que va a sacudir a todas las iglesias, tanto católicas como cristianas o protestantes, es el factor de que entre los descubrimientos que van a encontrar arqueológicamente está María, la Virgen María. No te voy a decir más información, pero va a afectarlos a todos ustedes. ¿Ok? Hay muchos secretos que van a ser revelados. Son tres, no te voy a, no te voy a, a decir el tercero, pero quiero que sepas que los, así como dice él en la profecía, que los católicos dirán, ¿ahora dónde vamos? Ya nos quedamos sin religión. Y nos vamos a, a convertir como los, judíos tan, como los judíos estaban antes del Estado de Israel. Vamos a ser los nuevos judíos del mundo, los católicos. Vamos a andar por todo el tiempo, por todo el mundo, uh, básicamente es escondiendo nuestra religión, escondiendo nuestra creencia como vagabundos en todo el mundo, debido a que el Vaticano va a ser destruido, va a ser quemado, ¿ok? Y, uh, y seremos nosotros los, remen los remenantes, remnants. Vamos a hacer un grupo, que son los católicos remnants, que vamos a andar como vagabundos por todo el mundo, porque también seremos perseguidos por muchos protestantes que nos odian y también por el establecimiento, ¿ok? Así que todo esto viene como lo parte de la Biblia. Hubo un profeta también católico, americano, que él lo profetizó mucho más antes que Mark Taylor. Él dijo bien claramente que íbamos a, a, a acabar como los judíos antes de que existiera el Estado de Israel, y que íbamos a andar por todo el mundo sin religión, pero siempre con la fe, siempre creyendo en el catecismo. ¿okay? Uh, de ahí viene otro grupo, que son ustedes, los protestantes, donde también serán los tres, las tres tribus de Dios, todo está en la Biblia. Y el tercero va a ser los mismos judíos. Así que todo esto viene, uh, y esta es la información que quería yo compartir con ustedes. No quería realmente, porque no quiero ser controversial, pero quería... Por eso se los puse a ustedes. Si ustedes quieren que se les diga, ahí está la información. All right, guys. So that's the information I have with you that I kept a long, long time because uh, I don't want to sound no. controversial. I don't want to sound, um, you know, that I try to make you believe something that is not real. Um, I think I already made myself very clear that... Um, Whenever I go and I give information that I think that you guys are not going to be able to, to uh, assimilate, then uh, I let you know. All right? So, sister, are you there? I'm here. Yeah. So, this is the information that, this part of the information that I didn't give, I didn't give you, but as you know, I repeated the same thing that I told you a long time ago, right? Right. Right. So, 
It's very interesting. So let's go through the, the last email, the last news. Vamos a ver lo último que, que salió hoy. Te voy a decir qué va a pasar. Bien, pon, pon mucha atención. First of all, today's show is called The Surrender. Why is called The Surrender? Why is called The Awakening? Because all of you will find out something that you did not know. Mark my words. You're going to find out something that you did not know. Mark my words. Okay? So, let me show you one, a po one post that they sent me. It's for somebody else. I don't know who this person is. Anyway, let me show you this. Oh, hold on. One second. Let me just close the door for my mom because it's actually, you guys have been listening right now. Hold on. Okay. All right, sorry for that. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, somebody named Nate Johnson, she said, I woke up yesterday, and the Lord says, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Then I was reminded of a man, Jesus, healed at the pool of Bethesda, who had been there for 38 years. Lazarus, who was raised after being dead for four days. And the woman who, ha who was healed from the issue of the blood. I felt such an urgency to partner with heaven to see long-standing issues suddenly heal and restore. Anyway. Suddenly, 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 and then something. What did I post on Facebook? Aquí estamos viendo una hermana en Cristo que dice, de repente, de repente, de repente. Y ella dice, porque Dios le dijo eso a ella, y habla de Jesús y cómo fue curado. Uh, ahí está toda la información en inglés, ¿ok? ¿Qué es lo que yo puse en Facebook? Fíjate lo que puse en Facebook, ¿no? I saw now, let me show you. I posted on my Facebook page, and let me close this because, okay, we're going to talk about that before, hold on, we're going to talk about this, hold on. I'm going to show you something that I posted that many of you probably, you probably seen it already. And uh, this is something that I posted I think three three days ago, three days ago, two days ago. Uh, are you there? Yeah, yeah. That's all right, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm I'm thinking, deep okay. thinking. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me show my people. All right. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. All right. Go. All right. I posted September the sixth. That's September the sixth. Okay. Yep. At five forty a.m. God told me they will come. Oh, yeah. They will surrender. And I've been struggling to know why. Why they will come and why they will surrender. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So, the reason why God told me that they will come and they will surrender mm -hmm. is because of this news. And I look at him and say, wait a minute, this is what God told me. They will come and they will surrender. Here we go. Praise God. Iraq top two parliament groups urge prime minister to resign. They will come, they, two parliament groups, and they will surrender. <laughs> we need to have the big surrender, the big surrender of, of King Clement. There will be a big surrender. We thought that it was Iran. No, who has been denying himself to raise the value of the Iraqi dinar? A body. And that reminds me, who said that body was a good guy so he will raise the value? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I, I don't even have to mention name, right? He was a good <laughs> right? <laughs> a liberal guru. He said, oh, hey, boy. no, man. But he's a nice guy. He's with us. He's going to raise the value. 
like a retard. <laughs> he has to be forced. He needs to be forced by the power of the living God. They don't want him around because he's corrupt. He's filthy corrupt. His people are already destroying federal buildings, people. It's all over the news. Okay? Take a look. They're burning the city. They're wow. burning the city, people. And I'm making this up. All right? They're burning the city. That's not it. Hold on. Oh, this is not it. Nope, that's my show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me go. Let me go down. They're burning the city because they don't have money. They don't have food. They don't have nothing. They don't have no services. But no, your guru knows best and his sources, right? He's a great guy. He's going to leave the value. Right? There you <laughs> go. That's the video. Look at Look at it. The nice guy of a body. And the people is burning and burning the city. See that? That's evidence. Where is your evidence? I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting, people. I'm still waiting for the stupid 800 number. Yes, I'm still waiting for the stupid 800. There was somebody who actually blocked him. He said, Betty, do you have the 800 number? Yes, here it is. And boom, I blocked him. <laughs> oh, wow. my God. Serious, people. Wake up, man. Stop being a brainwash. Okay? Nobody's calling 800 number. I would not recommend you to call the stupid 800 number. Okay? Don't call the 800 number. If you have been brainwashed by this guru for many years, right here on my show, you're not going to hear that shit. I'm serious. I'm not going to talk about rates. I never talk about rates. And when I have talked about rates, I've been telling you from the beginning, this is what I saw. But this is not going to happen on the public. I said it. I don't talk about rates. I don't talk about 800 numbers. And certainly, I will never talk about private groups. They're all a scam. They are all illegal. Okay? They are all illegal. You either come to the kingdom of Christ, of God, and learn what it is. Now, let me tell you about this news. I said right here. Breaking news, Venezuela is starting a gold saving plan to rescue the country's economy. Now, why are they doing this? They doing this because they know the event is about to happen. Bring us back to gold standard. They want to already start setting up the whole population because it's gonna be millions of people that are going to be able to have their currency, their currency back with oil, gold, diamond, Anything that they have worth underneath the ground and above the ground. That's the reset. That's how currencies will exchange. That's how you're going to be, be, be able to be blessed. Not because some retard telling you, oh, we'll go back. We're going to exchange by this weekend. And they're giving all the space and people going, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. So you present the Lord by lies. You present, you bring in the name of God in vain, people. You bring in the name of God in vain. If you don't know that, look in the Bible and trust, trust me what I'm telling you. I don't even know that it's in the Bible. God is telling me that. God is telling me that right now. So no, stop praising the Lord because of your bankers. Stop praising the Lord because of your guru. Stop praising the Lord because of the lies. Nothing is going to happen until the prophetic word is done. Nothing is going to happen. 
Anti God say so. Anti my Lord say so. So stop Amen. asking me when the ERB is going to be. Don't be such an idiot, a moron, to ask me that question. I just blocked four people asking me the stupid question. It is a stupid. You know why it's a stupid? Because if I knew, why do I my, why do I have to waste my time doing a show over here? I'm not getting paid out of this. If I knew the stupid, I don't want to even curse. Day of the RB. Why would I even waste my time? I would just wait and say, hey, I see you by this date. Right? I would do that. Don't worry about it. By this day, it's going to be the RB. Don't worry about it. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to take a break. And I see you on that day at this time. Amen. And then I will do it. I will do it. Why would I waste my time? Put all the pieces together every single night. So stop asking about the stupid question. And I'm telling you right now in English, and I'm going to say it in Spanish. The next retard who asked me when the RB going to be is because you want me to block you. So I'm going to block you. <laughs> Simple, right? It really annoys me that. It really, really bothers me. I don't know why, but it bothers me, seriously. No, but you have good logic there, Ben. Very yeah. good logic. You know, this This is the reason why I keep telling everybody, stop asking me about it. Stop asking but me you, about it. If they could get that logic that you wouldn't be doing this, you would yeah. just say, I'll come back. Why would oh. I even, yeah, you know, do you, right now, right now, you know what I would ready do? I would ready to go to the beach. Have a nice time in the beach. Right now, Amen. I want to go to Santa Monica, the Venice Beach, or even Long Beach. I just want to, you know, breathe the air. Relax. Relax. Yeah. Why would I waste my, not waste my time, because I love you, all of you, okay? But why would I spend my time if I knew when the stupid RB day is? They, when they told me that, I never even took it by, by, by serious because they've been lying to me. I have been, and I told you, I know the date, and I know the time, and guess what happened on that date? Nothing. They tried to kill Maduro. Yeah. September the 4th. And that's how everything related. Watch that the, they tried to stop triggering of the reset, and guess what? They did not were able to stop it. They couldn't stop it. They wanted to kill him, and they couldn't stop it, people. So something happened on that day that I only share with very few people. She is one of them, right? Yep. Tell the whole world. Did I share the y day with you? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> I, I want you to. I want. I want the whole world to know that I shared that with you. Okay. Yeah, uh, you did. You did absolutely many times. <laughs> all right. So. That is the reason, that is the reason that right now I've been persecuted by the retards or the gurus. They sending me all the trolls because they hate that I'm killing their business. They've been taking advantage of you. They've been selling stuff from you. They've been taking your donation. I've been very open about the donation that my just have been given to me. I've been very open. Not one minute I can reach myself out of you. Not one. That's the truth. <laughs> okay, not one. You can be not agree that I sometimes I, I ask for donations, but that's because I'm sacrificing myself over here too. Let me remind you. Tell me one guru who's been giving you intel seven days a week. None. Right? So there you go. Ahora, fíjate bien, ¿por qué Venezuela está ahorrando oro en un esfuerzo para estabilizar el país? Porque ellos están pre ahorita preparando para que todo el mundo tenga oro, para que todo el mundo ahorre oro, porque se están preparando para el evento. El evento que viene, que es traer al estandarte de oro. ¿Ok? Por eso lo están haciendo. 
Y ahora salió la noticia que están intercambiando compra y venta. Compra y venta se llama en inglés exchange. Y lo están haciendo bajo una tasa fija. O sea, que no están ya dependiendo del mercado internacional. Ellos ya están, ya están dándole el precio que quieren a su moneda. Y tú no te has dado cuenta que ya revaluaron. Ahí te voy a enseñar las noticias. Mira bien. Now, I had a lot of you guys not knowing, not understanding what just happened with Venezuela. I told you, Venezuela was going to revalue. Didn't I told you that? You did. Okay. Now look. Let me show you. There's a news and a lot of people did not understood what I posted. So I had to explain it again. And it says like this. Breaking news. Venezuela is now exchanging against the dollar at a fixed rate. Let me tell you why it's a fixed rate. That's the break in the system. They're not depending on the market. They're not depending on the trades. They're depending on what they have worth. Gold, diamond, oil, you name it. Anything that they have a lot of value. How may I say telling you that the risk is about the real value? Yes, I have. Yes, wow. I have. And you have not noticed that they already revalue. Praise they God. already revalue. Woo, so let's yes, party. They, they already revalue. Let's take a look. Watch. You have even noticed that. Look, I'm going to put this in English. All right? Oh, All right. Man. Where is the rest? Uh-oh. <laughs> Where is the Oh, here is the rest. Okay, let me put it in English. See, you guys, I'm telling you guys, this is what I got. I got, I got to go live to explain to you. They already revalue, okay? A new backing agreement in Venezuela allows the free purchase of sale and of foreign currency. That's called exchange in the country. The Minister of Economy and Finance of Venezuela, Simon Serpa, said on Friday that the public and private banks are already formally authorized to buy and sell currencies uh, at the same rate, fixed, fixed by the Central Bank of Venezuela. Currently, it is 61.3 bolivars per dollar. How much did it cost the, 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 the Bolivar against the dollar? 25 million. <laughs> They already revalue, people. Wow. They already revalue, and you have no idea what you're reading. That's, and this is the beginning. Watch Vietnam. I'm going to repeat that again. Are you listening, gurus? Go ahead and start misinforming your people. Watch Vietnam. That's the second one. Watch Indonesia. Who was the first one who fixed the rate? It was not Venezuela. It was Syria. I reported here. Syria reported through openly. The bank says, we have all the resources to control mm. the rate, the exchange rate against the dollar. How much did they, they, they change it? 200, 200 liras against the dollar. That is Intel. Your Rita's gurus, you are not mentioned. You have no idea how the economy works. That is Intel. Syria already controlling the exchange rate. From there, I told you, wait, everything's going to drop. And then, woo, here comes the increasing. Here comes the, re the, the revaluations all around the world. Watch Argentina. Are you listening, Argentina? Watch your peso going a little higher and higher. Watch. Brazil. I have a lot of people in Brazil. 
Watch, you're going to go through a economic reform. Are you listening, Brazilians? I got a lot of people from Brazil. I'm telling you what's going to happen. This is the reason why my, my show is going viral. Watch Brazil. They're going to go through an economic reform. And please, let me know. I don't care if it is in Portuguese. Let me know when that happened. Okay? Let me know when that happened. Se lo estoy diciendo a todo el mundo, hasta los brasileños. Tengo bastantes brasileños que me están escuchando. Brasil va a empezar una reforma económica. Se lo estoy cantando de ahorita. Para los que me están leyendo, los que están escuchándome en español, a todos los brasileños, que tengo bastantes brasileños que me están escuchando. Cuando tú sepas que tu gobierno va a empezar una, economía, una, una reforma económica, quiero que me mandes a mí la, la, la información. No me importa si está en, en portugués. Yo la voy a convertir en español o en inglés. Por favor. ¿Ok? Yo sé que muchos de ustedes entienden en español más que en inglés, por eso te lo estoy diciendo. Tengo bastantes brasileños que me están escuchando. Ustedes van a tener una reforma económica, van a cambiar de billetes, van a cambiar de moneda. Ustedes no están atentos a lo que va a pasar ahorita. ¿Ok? Argentina, igual, mira Argentina, yo sé que te está yendo muy mal. En, pocos, en pocas semanas vas a ver el precio del peso argentino subir un poco. ¿Por qué? Porque ya firmaron ese acuerdo. ¿Ok? Así que ustedes todavía están en buenas condiciones. No te preocupes. ¿All right? Entonces, ve lo que te digo. Venezuela ya revaluó. Pudo haber sido una miserada, pero ya me revaluó. Antes eran millones de dólares por un dólar. Ahora está a 61.3. Ya revaluó. Y muchos de ustedes no se dio cuenta. Tengo que salir aquí para decírtelo. There you go. See that? That's Intel. That's what's happening in the world. No lies, and, no manipulation. Go ahead. And Ben, I'll tell you, it's a confirmation because uh, we've been waiting for a uh, revelation and an understanding that this was going to take place uh, before the end of the year of 5778. And we're looking at it. It is taking place. It has started. You know, someone said to me the other day, I will believe it. Or I will, I will be, I will be rich when I see the money in the bank, and that's a statement of a person who has no faith. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody, even a company would say that. You know, you walk forward in prosperity and believing the word of God, believing that God is with you, and we have wealth. It is going to be manifested so we can see it. It is happening, and God fulfilled it in His current season. Definitely, definitely. And is, this is going to change the, the, the uh, mentality of many Christians. What's going to happen is going to change the mentality of many Christians. I'm telling you right now. Uh, Amen. Because uh, the, those who thought and they say, oh, no, I have faith in God. You guys don't have no faith in God. If Amen. If you would have faith in God, you will stick around to that promise. If we already knew that God doesn't take his time, and the reason why God takes his time to bless you is because he wants to purify your spirit. If you don't know that, now you know. You need to be purified your spirit so when you get your blessing, guess what? You're going to consider it. You're not going to take it for granted, people. You don't want to take your blessing for granted. I just told you in the beginning of my show, if you think that you have the bad habit of spending and spending and spending, you're not going to respect your blessing. You're going to take things by granted. Many of you have been waiting for 13 years or more like myself. Trust me. Every single dollar that I'll get, I will appreciate it. I'm Amen. not going to go into a rampage of spending, spending, spending. Do I have good choices? Of course I have good choices. But then, again, I got good decisions. If I'm going to buy a home that is $2.5 million, 
Trust me, I'm not gonna use the principal my money. I'm gonna use the bank's money. If the collapse happen, let it happen. They cannot take my property. If there is Amen. an earthquake in, in, in California, let it happen. I'm not paying for it. They supposed to fix it. They supposed to reveal it. Why? Because if they don't, they need to forgive me the two point five million dollars that I paid for that home that I asked for a loan. That's why. You always make great decisions. You never use your principal money. Okay? That's the why, that's the reason why I keep telling guys. When you get rich, there's only one thing you're gonna be doing. Decision, 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 decisions, all the time. If you are so pathetic that you cannot take one decision, you should be walking away and not wait for this blessing. Because Amen. you are going to go broke. If you think that just by hiring somebody, make that stupid retard, make your decisions. Decisions that you should take control of your own life. You should walk away and not wait for this for these blessings. Because you're gonna go broke. You are going and to be broke. And they're gonna go broke inside too, because they'll be broken inside. Their spirit will be broken. Yep. You know what I mean? It's not just loss of money, but you know, their their hope and uh, uh, their their plans and everything. If if everything falls apart, uh, they blame God. Uh, their souls at risk and their exactly. spirits at risk. Exactly. Um, y lo puedo decir una cosa a todos en español. Pongan mucha atención. <clears throat> Yo te he dicho siempre a ti, si tú no sabes gastar el dinero, si no sabes manejar el dinero, busca ayuda. Edúcate. Educar es una buena ayuda para ti. Busca un psiquiatra, no un psiquiatra, un psicólogo, ¿ok? Un psicólogo, no un psiquiatra, para que te aprenda, para que tú te aprendas a quitar la mala costumbre de gastar dinero. ¿Ok? Ah... Um, Haz lo que puedas, pero respeta la bendición de Dios. Si tú no respetas la bendición de Dios, vas a perderlo todo. Dios te está dando esta oportunidad para que tú sepas manejar el dinero de la mejor manera, ayudando al pobre, ayudando al, al necesitado, también ayudándote a ti, ¿ok? Pero también tienes que ser muy inteligente. No inteligente al, al extremo de ser un Einstein, pero tienes que tener buenos hábitos. Por ejemplo, yo me quiero comprar una casa de 2.5 millones de dólares. Ya la tengo hasta reservada. Yo no voy a usar el dinero principal de mi cambio. Yo voy a agarrar un préstamo de un banco. ¿Por qué? Porque si algo le pasa a California, yo no tengo que pagar por esa casa. Si el banco quiere que le siga pagando de la casa, del préstamo que me dio, él va a tener que, ellos van a tener que construir mi casa de vuelta. De otra manera, no puedo pagarle nada. ¿Ok? Así de, es, es, es usar el dinero de otras personas. Las otras personas son los banqueros. ¿Ok? Cuando tú te hagas rico, vas a hacer decisiones, 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 decisiones. Todo el tiempo vas a hacer decisiones. Es algo que tú no vas a poder correr. Si tú no sabes, si tú eres tan ridículo, tan, tan, tan ineficiente o tan idiota de no poder agarrar una decisión, corre, regresa tus monedas porque tú no hiciste para ser rico. Tú no naciste para ser rico. Si tú no sabes hacer buenas decisiones en tu vida, vas a perderlo todo. Las decisiones van a determinar cuánto tiempo vas a tener dinero. ¿Ok? Eso es todo lo que te quiero decir. Muchas gracias por tu atención. Y te veo hasta la próxima semana. Ya te enseñé. ¿Ok? Glorifica el nombre de Dios. Todo va a salir bien. Mantén la fe fuerte. Deja de escuchar a gurús. Y ven al reino de Dios. Ellos, solamente Dios, te va a salvar de la pobreza. Guys, 
I want to thank all of you for your letters. I haven't been able to, um, to respond so many emails from all of you. I got a lot of emails to respond. Please give me some time to respond to your emails. I got hundreds of emails right now. I gave you already what you need, which basically some of the emails was about the technology. I talk about it. I already show you that in my show. We are right now in the middle of the RB. Amen. Before the RB happen, please pay attention. There will be chaos. There will be panic. On the day of the RB, there will be chaos. There will be panic. There will be confusion. There will be lies. There will be manif ma manifestation of the demons. There is not going to be pretty, guys. It is not going to be pretty. You have been warned many times. Don't call any 800 numbers and don't exchange with private groups because you're not going to exchange. All right? So I've been bold enough to tell you. They're lying to you. Come to the kingdom of God first. I'm not afraid to be wrong. You know why? Because he is a living God. That's why. He is a living God. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor McCoy, for being with me tonight. God bless you. We'll talk later. Uh and uh, I want to leave you with this song because God told me to play it. I will see you next week. Monday is our week. Our main week. Monday the 10th. All the way to September the 16th. Wait for instructions. Wait for instructions. <laughs>